Hello, hello, everybody. Tonight, we are going to see if we can complete the final case of Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright, uh, which is technically the first act, I guess, of the Ace Attorney trilogy. And uh, just as a note, uh, things are a bit later than I'd like. We were on the cusp of finishing things like uh, almost two weeks ago. But then things happened. I won't just quote-unquote trauma dump on all of you. Well, I'll just say things happened. They should be roughly done and dusted, but enough about that. Let us see if we can finish this. All right. But I'm, like, completely lost on things, so, because, again, it's been, like, two weeks since I played. <coughs> I, since I last played the mystery game. All right, first, let's go over all of the evidence that we currently have. We have Goodman's ID that, I guess, it could just be legacy evidence. I'm not sure exactly if it's important now, because that was just to prove that Goodman was the quote-unquote uh, other casualty. When it, when it wasn't, as well as just a bunch of other shenanigans, but uh, I don't see it being important in the future. I have no idea why we still have this. It has to be somewhat important, because it's, like, the first... Like, because uh, it's the first piece of evidence that we've gotten that has played no role in any of this. Aside from, like, Marshall's brother, I think, being on this trophy. This, of course, is the murder weapon, so it's still here. Not sure about the parking stub, because I'm not sure how that would prove anything. Uh, who knows? Maybe there will be an up updated autopsy report that will go, Hey, the body was dead and for a long time. Because, again, the thing says he died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m., so between 4 and 5.30. And the supposed murder happened at 5.15. So who knows, maybe this will be used to prove something in the future. I have no idea why you exist except to haunt me. The autopsy report is obvious. This was the note to link Goodman to the SL9 case and open things up a bit more. Lana's cell phone, of course. A again, still a bit weird that it's like, ah, I said muffler to somebody. I'm not sure if, like... Emma is lying to me or not, who knows. Parking lot floor plans. Okay, oh yeah, because this is the lo biggest goddamn evidence locker that we've ever had for this game. The crime photo, which again, doesn't really s she seem like a murder pose. Victim shoe. Who knows, maybe the other... No, I, I, I don't know. After the thing proved that the... Like, who knows? Because apparently that is Lana's... Oh, no. Bears traces of blood from Goodman and Lana. Here I thought that... Because if I remember the testimony of uh, Angel correctly, she said that she only tested Lana's blood from her boyfriend's. She's like, ah, test this blood. The other one's obviously Goodman's. <laughs> then there's the switchblade knife that was used by... Dark? I forget his name. The serial killer. The luminol testing fluid. The ID card room thing. Again, the SSSSS has to be, I assume, like, literally the only character that it could reasonably be is, uh, the creepy man. I forget his name. The how's you swimming man who keeps staring at you creepily. Then we have the fingerprint set that we've only used for one fingerprint. The screwdriver, which was important to a case by Gaunt. Like, Gaunt says it's an important case thing and had Edgeworth hold on to it for some reason. The lost item report isn't important anymore because it was just there to basically prove that Goodman had lost his ID and somebody else used his ID to then get in. Evidence floor plans, basically useless now because... The only thing about it is we don't know whose blood it is that's behind the blue badger. That's basically it. The rubber glove, which is... Like, 
who knows? Maybe it's important to SL9. Maybe we'll, maybe more mysteries of SL9 will come about. Then there's the evidence locker. I don't think that's important anymore. Unless it will be used at some point. Because obviously, Goodman had to have gone in and rummaged through his evidence to then have the, 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 uh, my brain wanted to say electric glove, but that's not how words work. Obviously, Goodman rummaged through his evidence locker, which caused the rubber glove to stop it from locking, and thus, Marshall could open it. Obviously, you're going to be important. There's still a piece missing. Marshall's fingerprints I don't think are important anymore. The security video I don't think is important anymore. The SL9 incident files are important. And, but at the same time, I think we already went through it decently, but it might be important later. And then, of course, the latest piece of evidence. The Gaunt team picture with the goddamn pot in the background and the uh, armor for some reason. That has a stabby. Okay, that has to be important, right? There's an armor holding a giant, like, stabby stabby, so is that going to be important? Considering that the pot is there, maybe this is foreshadowing that there's... In fact, speaking of stabby, there's a broken knife on the trophy. I think it... Was it talked about? Was it talked about? Again, it's been two weeks. But obviously because... Marshall's brother is holding the Prosecutor Trophy that has been modified since because the normal Prosecutor Trophy does not have a knife, so... Eh. And I think we just got thrown out of Gaunt's... Diddly D, his office. He was just like, oh, we're going to leave this place. You're not going to be able to look around this, but... Anyway, let us talk to our good friend, Detective Gumshoe. But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Skye's the guilty party here, isn't she? Poor Emma. Regardless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. I need to, I need to do a good Gumshoe again. Not only that... But as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor has kept him safe from those who don't like him. But now, with this... Are they really... Are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those who with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey, Dick, keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat. Yes, sir. You gotta take me back to the joint sometime, okay, Dick? Yes, sir. Seems you don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm carefully not... I'm careful not to stick out too much. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth might just crack. Understandable. SL9 incident. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier, while while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find anything? The only evidence Doc left behind was a f during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... When he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. Me. Seems Detective Gumshoe never realized Emma was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, um, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in there, okay? His powers of recollection never fail to impress. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might just jog his memory. Well, let's talk about Dark's crimes, why don't we? Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take to serial killing? One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So, it was an accident. An accident, yes, but it transformed him into an animal. An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident. 
Then he killed a lady who saw the second crime. A kid who walked by just then, so he killed him too. Then the jogger came upon the scene and killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. That seems... odd. Mostly because... how would... Mostly because that seems more of a crime of passion. No. I. Quote unquote. A crime of, like, emotional distress more than anything. He accidentally killed a guy, but then he killed somebody who saw him kill the first guy. That doesn't really read like serial killing. Because. That, that feels like it would have to all happen really close together, which seems more like a mass attack than a serial killer. Seems he was pretty careless as a criminal. Oh, apparently, oh. here I go, presuming that that word, that similar to criminal, ending with an O, was criminal and not animal. Silly me. Seems like he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence, considering all it had, all of it had to happen close to each other so quickly, you'd think that he would have left more evidence. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily Doc was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness, aka Emma. Well, let's present to him the murder weapon, which should be this knife. Um, about this. Hey, is that? It has a tag attached to it with the label SL9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. <coughs> Excuse me. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker and was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's it! Now I remember what was incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again. <laughs> to be fair, he probably would forget rather quickly. The murder weapon. This knife, it was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at, plus it had his fingerprints on it too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look at it to notice that. Yeah, well anyway, take a guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet, down to the last fiber. That's pretty conclusive. Neil's autopsy report added to the court record. Oh no, a second autopsy report. My fears. Stabbed in the back, died from a punctured heart and lung. Heart and lung? I guess that would make sense, so I'm just trying... <laughs> For some reason, you don't really hear both. It's usually one or the other. A knife tip was in the wound. Switchblade knife updated in court record. The broken tip was found in the victim's body. It belonged to murderer Joe Dark. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money in need, you should ask Chief Gant. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now and his office is locked, but we'd like to have a look around if that's okay. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh, sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. That quick? Oh. So in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. 
I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. What would make him change his mind about going in there? <laughs> Maybe... Well, first, let's read the autopsy report. Properly like. Name of the deceased, Neil Marshall. Date and time of death, February 19th, between 7 and 7.30. Cause of death, single stab wound, piercing heart and lung. Assessment. Died from blood loss in under 10 minutes. Weapon found in wound was missing tip. Maybe this. Let me share a little advice with you as a detective. If you don't have a clue, keep your trap shut. I'll uh, keep that in mind. Sheesh. Maybe the pot? About about that jar. I think I've seen it before somewhere. Somewhere? Well, maybe it's one of those memories people have from previous lives. This must be the most un uninformative detective I've ever met. Something about it makes me feel uneasy. It's like I'm in the chief's office and he's yelling at me. Chief Gant? Where could I have seen that before? Could it be this? But it's in the photo! It's in the photo! Hmm. Maybe... The screwdriver? Nope. I'm just trying the various things that might let him in. Well, if we go off of my diddly D of I want this, maybe I should show him the trophy? In fact, act. In fact, come to think of it, the shield is broken and so is the. Hmm. That is a little weird, come to think of it. Because the trophy knife that is now missing on the actual trophy has a broken tip just like the murder weapon that was used to kill him. Like, obviously, that can't actually mean anything, right? Because it's... This was already broken, and the knife tip was found in the body. Hmm. That's just very odd. That's just very odd. Maybe we show him the case files. I've been studying up on those files. There's nothing wrong with Mr. Edgeworth's presentation. To think people are accusing him of injustice. I for one ain't buying it, pal! You're looking into the case for Mr. Edgeworth? Yeah, it was a pretty big deal while it was going on, you know. After all, the serial killer was on the loose. Lana was pretty clear in her confession. She forged evidence in order to prove Joe Dark guilty. I guess. Hey, that's it! That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got the other day. Nope, the other day is still like two days ago. Three days ago, but the first time that we could activate this conversation was two days ago. Of course, pal, got an award too, congratulations. I was wondering, why is the award a shield and why is it broken? Well, there's a reason. Um, I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently he's forgotten. Nope. I'm just trying to think. Because Emma said maybe we should show him something that would change his mind. So maybe we need to go and gather more evidence and come back. But we have so much evidence! Well, let's just show everything. Yes, this is just the same thing. Maybe the blue badger? This guy almost made us lose the case today. What are you talking about? He was got in the bloodstain on that evidence locker with his life! That's more than you can say about most officers nowadays. It would have saved us a lot of trouble if he hadn't guarded it so well. I have to admit, he's right, though. Thanks to the Blue Badger, we were able to prove another possibility today. The possibility that another murder took place prior to 515. Hmm. Maybe the autopsy report? Nope, if you don't know, if you did Because it might as well share everything. To a degree. Maybe this? That's the ID card record, isn't it? Yes, there's only one number left to investigate. At 420... <laughs> 420, boy, is it? 
The victim, Detective Goodman, must have entered the evidence room along with someone else. Someone with an executive officer number. Seven, 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 seven. That's one seven too many, Detective. An executive officer. I just might have a hunch. Again, the only person that I think it could be is Gant. Because... I don't think that there's anybody else that we know of in the case that could have any ID card. Like, Angel has been fired, and obviously her ID card wouldn't work, so she can't be it. I don't think that Lana's ID card would work, if Lana even has an ID card. I don't think Lana would have an ID card that would work at the police department, because she's a prosecutor, and that would be like crossing lines or something. I just, I don't think so. Maybe this? Oh, a lost item report, huh? Very impressive, detective. You know what it was right off the bat. Well, I am a master of misplacement, you know. Master? That has such a cool ring to it. The way I see it, if things are meant to be lost, then they're meant to be lost. There's a higher power at work here. Wow, a higher power. Maybe I shouldn't let Emma hold any evidence. <laughs> Maybe show him this? Nope. We'll just keep showing him things. And then... I don't think so. Maybe show him the security video? Nope. We'll show him this one more time. It's a nope. Maybe show him this. Then I guess we have to go and find more evidence! This is a downside to having way so much evidence, because it could anything could be pertinent. Maybe to the de detention center. Have we talked about everything? Maybe we show you the autopsy report. Oh, I don't think I've ever shown you evidence and got it wrong before. Something's taboo, especially when their interests of both parties are involved. She really means it. Maybe this. Attorneys and prosecutors have no business showing evidence outside court. But it's important. Maybe this. Nope. I guess that's the game's way of saying, Sorry, bucko, but you can't show her any evidence. She doesn't care. Do you know what this is? Yeah, it really does seem... Maybe. Do you know? But at the same time, my dude, you are my... My dude. Okay, she really doesn't care. Okay. She does not care. Uh, let's go to the underground parking lot, I guess. I don't think that there's anything for me to search. I don't think that there are any, like, who knows? Maybe we can fingerprint things? Like, surely we should. Hmm. Because I'm just wondering if I could use... Like, a fingerprint on anything in here. But it does not look like I will be able to. Granted. I would need to luminol. Well, I would need to know where, like, fingerprints were. I don't think that there is anything here. Maybe High Prosecutor's Office? Ah! Maybe my man is here. I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is! It looks like he's writing something. Look, what are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? Hmm. <laughs> I've had to live the past two years with rumors flying around. What's another allegation to me? Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So, what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Let's give you some conversation. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to. Nothing I do can erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean, the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error. My responsibility as the prosecutor in charge. And the fact remains. The same no matter what excuses I might have. 
Mr. Edgeworth, I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Tomorrow's trial. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Hmm. First last year's trial and now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. Tomorrow is the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. I'll bet that's why my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? The list of evidence seems too short. The list of evidence, it seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists? That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. Use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture. Something seems strange about it. Well, let's ask about the day of the crime. Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered. You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I've never cared for ceremonies, but I had to. Excuse me? Blah. You eat a little bit of pizza and then your body is like, Arr, have hiccups, Arr. I've never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this? Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning, then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and ends, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh yeah, Chief Gann asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes, it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed off half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to? That's right. Does seem a bit odd when put like that. Because, again, it just seems odd that Goodman would, like, come to the prosecutor's office. Specifically, again, because the lock to Edgeworth's car was broken. And according to the events that we have been given, that are being accused, Goodman and Lana were at his open trunk that Lana then somehow got his Edgeworth's knife out of the trunk and used it to kill Goodman, which just is odd. Hmm. Well, what if I give you this? Right. <laughs> Very stylish manner. Would you look at this pot? He doesn't care about the pot. Maybe if I gave him some weed. Well, let's do the obvious thing. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gant's office. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Now he had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding. It's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. I remember now. Remember what? That was the, what the official prosecutor's trophy looked like until two years ago. There's a story behind its design. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Well, let's ask him about that. This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, and the second means shield. Have you heard this story? Me? Oh, uh, sure. Everyone knows that. Why don't you tell it, though? For Emma's sake. <laughs> ah, good old Phoenix. Very well. Neat. <laughs> it's even playing the, like, investigative music. Long ago in the kingdom of 
Chu, I, I assume, there was an arms merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. Hmm. Wait a minute. <laughs> Those claims contradict each other. Very perceptive. But then again, you've heard this story before, right? Anyway, as you mentioned, the very descriptions of these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless, and thus the Chinese word for contradiction was born. I wonder if that's true. I could see that being like... Like, maybe the tale itself isn't real, but maybe it could be a retroactive thing where, for whatever reason, the word contradiction was written with those symbols, and then they're like, hey, let's make up something to go along with the word, or who knows, maybe <laughs> maybe this game is making the entire thing up too, who knows. Oh, I see, so the chipped shield and broken knife symbolize... Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words, but it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion. Even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow, thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, he had the halberd part of the award abolished. Chief Gant. King of Prosecutors Trophy updated. Hmm. Now it's actually relevant! Arrgh! Well, I'm going to assume that... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe we can take a look at that discarded paper. I wonder what he was writing before. Come on, Mr. Wright. Let's take a look. Are you crazy? Edgeworth is sitting right there. Just distract him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edgeworth. Is that Detective Gumshoe out the window there? Oh, no. He's falling to the ground. Hold on. First, let me see what this girl's doing crawling around my feet. He didn't even look. What? Letter of r If you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says, Letter of Resignation. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean... I'm tired, right? I feel as if something inside me has died. But Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault. I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Oh, I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation. I wonder if I can use it for anything. I know I could use that to... Because the one thing that I feel that Gumshoe would risk, above all else, is risking his job to help Mr. Ed Edgeworth. But that's honestly kind of chill of you, Edgeworth, to just be like, Oh, fine, I tossed this to the ground, but if you're going to snip around, I might as well read it to you. Then again, it could have just been because it was Emma. Excuse me. Ah, uh, Sky again. Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Miss Star! I guess she's out of lunch. <laughs> you certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like... The first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. Yeah, that is a weird way of saying it, lady. Still, I never thought you'd go digging up that case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from that case was due for transferal. This can't all be attributed to mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? You know, that little scene I happened to witness? The instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savored when eaten. The star's hatred toward Lana. It all dates back to two years ago. Well, let's talk. The Dark Investigation. Joe Dark. That's a name I'll not soon forget. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. Poor old Jake Marshall, though. Must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? 
They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Her? Lana Skye. My sister? The best of the best were put on the SL9 case. Of course they were led by that legendary duo. Lana and Chief Gant. After case closed. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we were so shocked over how it turned out. You mean, with the forging of the evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was the uh, meh. It was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found would suddenly appear, while other items were kept in secret. But you don't have proof anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us save Goodman were relieved of our duties, most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used? Well, let's legendary duo it. Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Gant led the investigation with Lana second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Gant's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that, I mean his ability to attract evidence. He produced the most incredible evidence in the cases he handled. Incredible evidence? You mean... Oh, yes. There were rumors about him even back then. No one dared confront him, though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence. Back then, everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Really? Oh, yes. Myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooked and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would have ever recovered from his shock. And that's what it makes it all the more infuriating. Miss Star. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Being used. Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief. That's right. Having solved the SL9 case, his position as Chief was secured. There was only one thing left for him to control, and then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. What? You mean, that's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But, but how could he control Lana? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she nev she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude there must have been some reason for her change. At last, I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, rookie. It takes more than just ingredients to create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I've been. Well, I mean, you have been helping us. Would you like to take a look at this? Well, I guess that's evidence. The only thing I can give you now is a poppy seed rice set. Talk about cheap. Eat this and maybe you'll be able to tell black from white in court tomorrow. So I'm assuming that that's the game letting me know that yes, there is nothing left to be gained. You don't have to present anything to her. Nothing new can be learned from her. Very well, game. Off we go to the police department, then. Nothing here. Then we shall go to criminal affairs. Oh, you're back. You're still here? I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files. I'm turning into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Oh, that DJ. I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer's still no. I'm not letting you into the chief's office, period. 
It'd be my neck on the line. That office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. There's got to be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. And I think I have precisely the thing. Well, uh, well, I guess you'd like to know. He's getting, he's resigning. What's this crumpled up piece of paper? No way! Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious! Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they've pushed him this far! Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. When I first met him, I thought he was as cold as ice too. But I know different now. He trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence! But we just... We betrayed him. Detective... That's it. I made up my mind. But... Here, take my ID card. We can't do that. If someone found out, they wouldn't let you run off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. What? So at least let me do this. For Mr. Edgeworth's sake! All right, detective. Thank you. Gumshoe's ID tucked swiftly into pocket. Thank you, Gumshoe. This is why I like him. He's a nice man. Gumshoe is like... He, he is a himbo. He is stupid, but he's good. He's good-natured. Here goes, Mr. Wright. Click. And it's playing that music. Hey, there's that statue again. With the pointy end. We're in. If anyone finds us now, Detective Gumshoe's a goner. If that happens, I'm counting on you two to bail me out. <laughs> what happened? Did we black out? <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Ah! Detective Gumshoe! What are you doing sneaking up on us like that? I wasn't sneaking. I was just worried something might go wrong. So I came to. If you're here, then what's the point of giving us your ID card? <laughs> Crushed and rendered on... <laughs> Crushed and rendered unusable. Hey, don't do that to my card! That's hilarious. I hardly ever get a chance to come in here. So I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. You really don't want to get fired, don't you? Not if we're lucky. Now come on, let's see what we can find out. We've got a bad feeling about this. Well, the chief's office. That desk on the other side of the room. Was that your sister's? Yes, that's where I was waiting for Lana on that day two years ago. Is anyone using it now? No, sir. This is entirely Chief Gant's office now. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. That's a strange reason to leave it there. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us so himself at our New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty intoxicated at the time. I see. So ever since Lana left, no one ever touches that desk? No one except Chief Gant. And the cleaning lady who's in here each morning. Still, two years have passed since that incident. There can't possibly be any clues remaining, right? Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came in to look around, right? Because it's one of the SL9 crime scenes. I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, isn't it? Why do you ask? You don't think... Nah, you wouldn't be... No... No, oh, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay, now then let's take a look around a bit more. Hey, hold on! Not so fast, buddy! Huh? What is it? When someone tells you, don't worry about it, it's supposed to stop bothering you, pal! You don't just let it go at that. Sorry. Start, this guy's starting to get on my nerves. Okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think... Chief Gant... Might be a suspect, do you? What? He's right, Mr. Wright. What do we think of him? He is suspicious as fuck. 
And also the only remaining person who could possibly be the executive key card that got into the evidence room. Chief Gant. So it's finally come to this. How do I think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings yet. There you go, ignoring me again. Poor, poor man. Poor gumshoe. Poor soon-to-be an ex-detective gumshoe. Well, first things first, we should probably take a look around this place. Look at that giant window. Makes you want to crash through it and jump outside. Um, this is the 15th floor. I know, I was just saying. Saying what? Ever since making detective, I've always dreamed about doing something like that. Note to self, Detective Gumshoe has a lot of dreams. So long as he doesn't go crashing through that window when he gets fired. Don't say that! It is pretty dark, right? These shelves are mostly empty. Lana must have cleaned, out, cleaned them out when she transferred over to the prosecutor's office. There's a small picture frame on the left shelf. Hey, this is when Lana and I went out to the theme park. Harsh. Well, I guess let's take a look at this again. This was taken on that day two years ago. The day Joe Dark ran out of the questioning room and tried to kill Emma. After receiving his award trophy, Mr. Marshall took a picture here. Then went along with Chief Gant to question Dark. I but he never knew he'd be dead just a few hours later. Gee, you think? This is Lana's desk. It sure is tidy. Lana's always been a meticulous cleaner. There's not even any dust on it. Look, it looks like someone's still keeping it clean. Does Lana ever come back here? No. Chief Gant must still keep it clean in memory of their partnership. They were the stuff of legends I'm made of. Does he keep it in memory of her or in memory of the crime? Let's take a look at his desk. Wow, look at the size of Chief Gant's desk. Speaking of that, when we were here earlier... Oh, it's you two! Chief Gant! He put that paper he was reading on his desk. I wonder what he was reading. This looks like a list of evidence. A list of evidence? In most cases, the list runs twice as long as this, though. Yeah, the, Edgeworth said the exact same thing. Hey, look at the case name! Huh? SL9 incident. I wonder what this is doing here. Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said, I wonder what... No, about the evidence list. Normally, they're twice as long. That's right. I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. Really? A half-sized list of evidence... The list of evidence seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. What would the other half of that list be doing here? I knew it! The chief must be hiding something about that case! It would appear so. Evidence list added. Ooh, does that mean we get to take a look at it? Well, why is there a crystal ball in there? I want to take a look at the, uh, the armor. This is the real deal, isn't it? This armor and these weapons? Sure is, pal. The chief doesn't care for imitations. First the pipe organ, now this armor? Do you think how many taxpayer dollars must have gone into this room? What? You mean we're paying for this? That's it. I'm not paying one cent of my taxes. You don't have any taxes to pay. Shh, be careful what you say. Who knows, the chief may be hiding in this armor as we speak. I don't think he'd fit in there. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. Cut it out! You guys don't know how scary that guy can be! Do we? I think we do. Can we take a look at the evidence proper? No! I wanted to take a look at the evidence proper! What? 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 Um... What? What is this? What are you? I wonder what this is. It looks like someone drew some kind of sketch here. What is it? Did you find something? I can't make it out. I'd better keep quiet about it for now. Huh? Oh, no, it's nothing. Why are your eyes moving about like that, Mr. Wright? I better not forget about this picture. 
What does that mean? What does it mean, game? What do you mean? Oh, we don't need to talk about this. I don't know what it is. I know exactly what it is, but that is only because uh, we are magical. We know things. Well, let's look at the safe. I am losing my mind. This is a safe, isn't it? Safe. That word is ripe with intrigue. Um, okay. If you say so. It looks like a code is needed to be entered to in this panel to open it. How many sevens? A seven-digit number. I think I just might know what it is. Input number. Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know! You want to try my birthday? It's... I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. I think I know what it is. Seven, seven, seven. Seven, 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 seven. Yep. Who would have thought? Well, that proves that Chief Gant is the person that went in before everybody else that day. Bingo. What number did you enter? Whose birthday was that, pal? 7777777. Seven, seven. The final ID card number on that record. What? The number of the mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. You mean 7777777? Seven, 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 seven? That ID number? I think you're one seven shy this time. This can only mean one thing. That's Chief Gant's ID number. Say, anyone care to look inside? Well, I'm gonna save because it's playing the intense music. Oh no. No, not move. What's inside? Is there any money in there? How much does he have stashed away? Look, it's a, a... A shard from a broken cup. This somehow looks familiar. Well, that's a little bit ominous. There's something else in there, too. What is that? It looks like a piece of leather cloth. With a handprint on it. This is a handprint, isn't it? Hey, I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. You think the chief made up the design? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, well, it was just a thought. Is that it? This is all that was in the safe? Apparently so, it's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it. A, and a broken shot from a cup. They look like pieces of evidence. Yeah, but unless you can prove they have something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take it. After all, it's my neck on the line here! Great, now I have to prove their relevancy to get them. How are these two items related to the SL9 incident? Come on, there's gotta be something we can show to the detective. I know at least one of them. I don't know what the piece of cloth is. The piece of cloth, I have no idea what is relevant, but... It obviously goes to this. Hey, look! They're hard to make up. Uh, we already read that. Looks like blood, blah, blah, blah. Been longer for months, maybe. Do I have to talk to him? Nope. Do I have to... Maybe I present this? Detective Gumshoe. Could you have a look at this jar? I remember when the three of us put that back together. Oh, <laughs> those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. Wasn't this jar a piece of the evidence from that case? That's right! One of the shards had an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, that fragment we just found? You mean this one that was in the safe? Yes, that one. That was in the safe. <laughs> Ding! Now that you mention it, it's ringing a lot of bells! Let's see if it fits! Assemble the fragments. Here, let me see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, pal. Show us what a rookie can do. Mr. Wright, here's some glue. If I can piece this together again, it'll prove Chief Gant was knowingly hiding evidence. Here goes. All right. Hmm. It has to be this rotation. It is now complete! 
There! It fits like a charm. That, of course, means Chief Gant willingly and knowingly hid a piece of this jar in his safe. In other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. But... Hey, guys! Get a load of this! What is it? This piece you just attached! It's different from the others! Is it? There's a reddish line on it. A reddish line? That's blood. I don't get it. Why would Chief Gant hide this in his safe? Unstable jar updated in court record. Oh. Is that supposed to be Japanese? No. I was thinking like Japanese kanji. Oh, are we gonna have to play like connect the dots? But I wish that I could like activate this and use it. I wonder if I could do some luminol testing. Well, first things first, let's sa uh, save. Nothing new to say. So what if we did some luminol testing about? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Luminol. Ah, oh, dang it, I hit the wrong button. I'm a fool! Aha! Blood! Blood! Whoa, this area must have been covered in blood! Is this from that incident? It must be. When Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. Two years ago have passed, so the reaction's kind of dull. So a murder really did take place here. Eh, no shit. Well, because again, this is in the picture. So I feel... Ah, uh, I thought, like, maybe it would be important. Sadness. Hmm. I wonder if we can now, like, maybe examine the safe and get that other piece of evidence? Nope. So obviously, there has to be something more. The Chief's organ sure is a sight to behold. Occasionally, we hear him playing it from the Criminal Affairs Department. That's on the second floor, and this is the 15th floor of an entirely different building. When the detective screws up, the Chief calls them to his office. So what did I miss? Uh, so far, we... At least this time... We continued our conversation with Gumshoe. We went and had a chat with Edgeworth, and he is planning on, uh, well, I guess that got thrown out of evidence, but we saw his resignation thing that now we use to get Gumshoe to let us in here, and also, while you're breaking into the chief of police's office to go and cold case a case that's been completed, remember to stay hydrated. And I discovered this the weird sketch on the back of the missing evidence list that was given to Edgeworth. And, uh, right now we're just investigating Chief Gant's little hideaway place with poor Gumshoe, who's neck on the line. Oh, and we also completed the, the diddly D. I'm just making sure I haven't missed anything by investigating. And makes them listen to the organ for hours. What's so bad about that? Music soothes the soul. After that, the detectives can't hear anything for days except the ringing in their ears. So it's an instrument of punishment, literally. But aren't the Chief's ears affected? He never listens to anyone anyway. That's beside the point. Hmm. Because I wish that I could have the piece of cloth and uh, do some fingerprint testing. Wow, look at the size of the Chief Gant's desk. We found this inside the drawer, a list of evidence from the SL9 incident. Mr. Edgeworth had the other half of that list. What would this do be doing here? We better take a little more a little more look, look a little bit more into this. One of the scariest things in a horror game is when you go into a dark room and the game says saving. <laughs> yeah, because now you know horror is on the way. Hmm, I guess now I have to present the jar to you. Jar. I feel a lot better now that the jar's complete. But it only raises another question. What was the piece of it doing in, Chief's, in the Chief's safe? More importantly, why wasn't there any money in there? 
Isn't that what the saves are for, anyways? I have a feeling the outcome of tomorrow's trial just might hinge on this. I still want to know... the secret. Hey, look here. It's hard to make out, but there's red stain. Looks like blood. This piece, the chief has it different, though. The blood stains on the other are just spots. But this one's a line. That is odd. Hmm. Can I use the fingerprinting? I need to probably get out of the present. I want to use your weapon or not. Leg. Hmm. Did you know that there are screenplays on Phoenix Wright available on YouTube right now, but they take up to two hours? Understandable if you want to do, like, even a single game. Hell, maybe even a single case. Well, later cases. You could probably squeeze the first uh, two cases together and have it be super easy and fast. Hmm. So, considering that the game won't let me take a look at the piece of cloth... I'm going to assume we need to take this to this uh, secondary thing to Edgeworth, maybe. Or maybe I'm just completely missing. Oh, I know. Maybe I need to show you some things. I first... Well, and guess what? Every one of the cases except for one is completely original. Ah, that is cool. Well, first things first, I sh show you evidence list. Nope, you're just like, I'm an attorney. Uh, I'm a prosecutor. Do not show me evidence. How about this pot? You just really do not care. Now I wonder, like... If there's, like, a famous... <coughs> excuse me. If there's a famous Phoenix Wright fan fiction. Would you like to take a look at this? You do not care. Why does nobody care about evidence? But that was your whole thing. You wanted to care about evidence. Missing evidence! Nope. So I guess I missed something back at the office. How many times has Lana betrayed you at this point? 64. Nah, she wasn't on the Nintendo. 64. And I don't even really think that she's betrayed us. Because I don't even... Aside from obviously the Bibbidi Bop saying that she committed the crime, I don't think that she's lied. I don't think. Well, let's take a look at this window, I guess. You can see pretty far from 15 stories up. If you were to drop that suit of armor from here... At first, the chief wanted to use stained glass for this window. Really? Why didn't he? They say he changed his mind because he wouldn't be able to see the view. But he's standing behind it. Stained glass or not, it's a huge window. Hmm. Hope we already looked at that. So maybe I need to present you with... Oh, maybe I need to present you with this now. If I'm far, that will be able to give you all the information. So that's why I have to get it all out of my system now. You understand, don't you? Don't be so negative, detective. We do want you to share your information, though. Oh, who am I fooling? I have never had anything useful to share to begin with. Uh, got to stay positive. Oh, and in the screenplays, Gumshoe is a great breakdancer. I could believe it. Hmm. Show that. We already showed that. Maybe we need to show you? That's what the chief was reading before, isn't it? You know, when we first came in here? Yeah, it looks like the right side of the form's been torn off. So Mr. Edgeworth, so Mr. Edgeworth's list was only half the whole thing. Something else is bugging me more than that. Take a look at the back of that form, pal. The back? I already did. But I guess now the game says it's time to actually investigate this. Because we already went through this. But for some reason, Phoenix is like, No, I cannot let people know that I now know about this. Well, let's present it again. Nope, that's the same thing. That's just there to prompt you to look at the back. Hmm. Maybe autopsy report? Nope. What information doth thou want? Because hmm. we already tried a bunch of that. 
Ooh, maybe I need to, well, not you, but investigate the pot again. Maybe. Hmm. Let's investigate the whole pot. Huh? This thing doesn't have a bottom. That's weird. One of the side is up. What's the purpose of a bottomless jar? Nope, we already knew about that. Hmm. There's just way too much evidence in here. Again, I want that piece of cloth! Gumshoe! Give me the cloth! Hmm. Maybe you, you want to know about the cool fact that this is no longer a contradiction? That's the King of Prosecutors Award, the Vega the War himself, congratulations. Oh, is this a dragon? Yeah, that's it, a dragon. Yeah, the thing for shield, see? That's not exactly the version we heard. No, but this one sounds more exciting. Anyway, it gets kind of gory after that. I'll spare you the details. Nope. I wonder if, someone, <laughs> if pe some people break jars to smell the dust that comes from them. There has to be at least one weirdo out there, but... I don't... <laughs> unless there's, like, some kind of... I don't know, like, religious thing or fad out there. I don't think so. Hmm. The only thing I can think of now is more luminol testing. Time to go crazy, I guess. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to use it. I doubt that I'll find anything, though. Personally, but I might as well try. Rapid-fire luminol testing. This place will be more luminol than air when I'm done with them. I hope the answer is, it does not appear to be. I do find it funny that the UI just stops you. No, you cannot target the UI for luminol testing. So, no. The answer is no. Nothing else. And again, I... Unless the game wanted me to, like, present the piece of paper and then it says, Oh, hey! diddly dee But we already tried to show it to, uh, to the dude, to our Edgeworth man. But I don't think that there's anything else to investigate here. Hmm. Again, I wish the game would give me that scrap of cloth. Oh, maybe this. This mark looks like some kind of flower. World is, it's designed after the insignia on the prosecutor's badge. Prosecutor's badge? Yeah, like the one hanging from your collar. What? They have badges too? The design's supposed to portray the severity of the punishment system. Now that you mention it, it does look all pointy and kind of painful. Miss Mr. Edgeworth never wears a badge. That's because he's a shop dresser. A badge like that wouldn't go too well with his suit. So sharp dressers don't need to wear badges? I guess everyone just kind of lets it slide. I don't see how that's supposed to signify severe punishment. Because hmm. I already checked everything over, I do believe. I can't investigate you. Nothing you. We already looked you over and then some. Hmm. There's nothing on you, again. I long for the day that I could use. Hmm. The game won't let me just use you willy-nilly. Hmm. So, is there anything that I need to present to you? We already did you. None of you makes sense. Maybe the switchblade. Body. Ever since that case was solved, the knife's been in Dr. Goodman's locker. How would it have possibly gotten into Mr. Edgeworth's car? Not only that, but it would have wrapped in Lana's scarf. What's even more mysterious is whether that's called a scarf or a muffler. Answer me that, pal! Hmm. 
Funny that we know no, but can't put it down. And I can't use you. Because unless I'm missing a mechanic on using the, the dust for fingerprinting, because maybe the blood splatter could be used for fingerprinting here, but... Mm. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I am out of brain. I am out of brain. My only thought now is to go and try and present the path list to Wedgeworth again, even though that's probably not what I'm supposed to do because I am dumb. Hello, Wedgeworth, I am being dumb. The game is still going, oh, maybe if you f give him the proper thing, but that's probably just the placeholder from before. Higgledy Piggledy. So, maybe I need to examine the trophy again! But no, this seems to be the same one from before. Oh, I saw something today that looked like this somewhere. I really was supposed- well, maybe not. Maybe this is just the, hey, you can re-examine things in Edgeworth's room to get, n like, new diddly d. That's my thought. While you're confused by a case, remember to stay hydrated. Something that looked like that. Yeah, only different. Now, where was that? She's right. Something's amiss here. But we already- maybe I should show Edgeworth that item. Yep, that was just, hey. Do you want to know the truth? <laughs> Bibbidi bop. So now, I just need to think. Because I already looked through everything. Maybe I should just spam give everything to... Because obviously the game is saying, hey, don't bother with her. Over and over again. By her saying, hey, I have nothing to say to you. Which is fair. I'm just trying to think. Nope, oh, wrong button. Back. I am out of my brain. I do find it kind of amusing that you could technically go from the detention center all the way to this place. Because hmm. again, everything seems to be already looked through. So I do not know. Higgledy Piggledy. Just trying to think. Is there anything that I need to give to you that would make sense? Because we already looked at that. Maybe SL9. Nope. Since there's a card racer for everything, even Mortal Kombat, yep, I remember that. Why isn't there a Phoenix Wright kart racer? Probably because it's kind of a smaller game more than anything. <laughs> so it's just like... Especially because of the type of game, but again, granted, Mortal Kombat got a kart racer, but that was also kind of a mini-game mixed up with it. I shall cave, because I have the walkthrough right next to me, and I shall look, let's see, at the unstable jar. Unstable jar is updated. Present the fingerprinting set! Prevent th present the fingerprinting set game! Why? It- okay, I am sorry, but I'm going to rant about this. That is dumb. What should have happened is we present the jar, the broken jar, to Gumshoe. And he was like, hey, maybe maybe this piece is to this jar. Let's see. And then you do it, and it works. And then Gumshoe goes, oh my golly gee, would you look at that? One of the two things in the safe were relevant to the case. I wonder if the other thing is. And then the cloth should be added to the case file, 
so that we can investigate it naturally. Why do we have to do this? Let us present the hellhole! That is dumb! Okay! Detective Gumshoe, I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is! So, you wanna take some fingerprints? I mean, I guess on some level it might make sense, but it's not like you have to present the luminol fluid to people when you wanna do it on a crime scene. I would just feel like, again, you do the jar thing, and that uh, that allows Gumshoe to, like, give it to you for so you can look it over for clues. To be like, hey, maybe you can look at this and make it make sense to the case as well, since you did the jar piece. And then the game would prompt us to use the dust when we try to investigate the cloth. That is my thought process on how this would naturally go. Because, again, considering that the luminol fluid is just something that you use... I feel like the fingerprinting set should also be something similar, especially because, it's, again, we don't present the luminol fluid to anybody. So it didn't dawn on me to want to present the fingerprinting to every anybody. Then again, maybe we did do that? Early, because it has been like two weeks because life. But I do not think that there was any weirdness on presenting the fingerprinting set to somebody when we were, like, in the evidence room. But, bleh, let's get on with it. That's a great idea, detective. All right, go to town. Sheesh. What are you doing? I mean, the luminol is in the card record, so maybe that was a clue. I don't think so, because the, uh, the luminol fluid is in the courtroom as a kind of an inventory. And I, you'd think that it would be some... But because it's on this specific piece of evidence, like the... Okay, to rephrase, because brain, the luminol fluid is in the inventory system, basically, as just something that you can use when you're investigating a crime scene. And since it kind of makes sense to, like... To, on some degree, it does make sense to have the fingerprinting set be something that is only contextual. So, like, oh, you investigated this bloodstain. Maybe we should fingerprint it. But I just feel like it would feel more natural and less confusing if, again, Gumshoe gave you the cloth after you do the, did the, the pot so that you could then investigate it. And then the game would prompt you to be like, oh, there's, like, a handprint on it. Let's use the fingerprinting set to see if there's anybody relevant to this case who would match this fingerprint on this cloth, is how my brain works. And it just feels weird that, like, we have to present it to get that evidence and then automatically go in. It's just a process that feels weird to me, personally. What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints. Um, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Huh? Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. We're talking about that cloth we found in the safe. Oh, <laughs> I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? It's just a little process thing that... I feel like it could have been made simpler because, again, it didn't click in my brain to present the fingerprinting. Maybe if there were more opportunities to f do fingerprinting before this. This is kind of the problem with introducing new game mechanics in the final case. I do understand why they did that, because they wanted to have cool things for new uh, for people to do on the DS version with the extra case, but it's still kind of bad game design, because then you run into this, <laughs> where you don't have a full game to iron out how you want to use something like this. Okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for fingerprints. Sprinkle the powder on the cloth. Then, once you've they've been absorbed into the prints, blow the rest away. What are you, my mom? I don't have to be told a million times. All right, let's get this over with. Uh, I am pressing space for dusting. Do you see why this is a bad case? There. Oh, I'm brain. <laughs> my brain was like, I, I just do this. I forgot I need to select a thing. Because I don't think it's a bad case. I think it does have flaws, though. Because, like, the case itself is interesting. But so far, like, there are just a few little things that do... Like, once you know them... It's, like, not as bad. But basically, it feels like this could have used, like, a secondary pass over it. 
I'll have to look on, look back on it with a full thing and full hindsight once we're done. Hmm, I give it my best shot. The kind of result won't be any good for matching prints, will it? But it doesn't look like we'll get a clearer result from this print. Okay, let's try a different finger then. Alrighty then. Maybe this one because it's the clearest? Because it also probably doesn't help that this case was made years after this game was finished for so it'd be like a bonus case on the D, the DS version because a lot of because this is a very intriguing case the characters are very cool it's just a little weird ah this is good except it once more more dust for the fingerprint more dust more cocaine That doesn't look similar. Nope. 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 Don't think so. Uh, maybe? Oh! 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 Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Oh no, no, how can this be? What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found a match? Whose fingerprints were they? Huh, oh, uh, it seems the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be Dark's prints. Psst, hey you, over here. What's going on here? What are the kid's prints doing inside the chief's safe? Don't ask me. Let's just keep this information from Emma for now. Here, maybe you should hold on to this. Found a cheap gigantic safe evidence for something, but what? Bears Emma Sky's prints. Well, was I any help? Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. You know, the card that I destroyed. Now this is probably Gant. Now that's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you in the coat? Yeah! Chief Gant! We didn't think you'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a straight dog run into a pole. Just then, I thought of a certain detective. Do you mean me, sir? Now then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, you in the coat. Me, sir. Drop off your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. Emma, now we're even. I keep this cloth from the police, and I won't report you for making me steal a wallet. To be fair, it was evidence. That was probably semi-relevant because the head guy who was investigating that crime scene was the one who stole the wallet technically and left it there at the crime scene the, this is the phoenix right things are weird but sir and again now get out y yes sir he is a creepy man we'll be on our way too then wait you the one with the sp the one without the spiky hair don't go yet but me sir i'd like a word with you but, sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. <laughs> you with the spiky hair! You're free to go. M Mr. Wright! I would protest that a bit. I don't feel comfortable leaving the, the young child with Mr. Creepy. Look, pal, I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times, the chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it! Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office, I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. But why is she up to eerily silent about this time? Anyway, you listen to me? I'm gonna try smooth things over with the Chief again! Later, pal! After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police wanted to ask her some questions, so she'll be busy for the rest of the day. Weird. Well, time to give you the weird things, I guess, Lana. 
I see. So the chief asked Emma to come in for questioning. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all I can. What you've told me is over the past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Really, I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I finally figured it out. I know it is who it is that's lurking behind your words. Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. Now's my chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. What's the amount of salary revenues that Gumshoe has? I'm surprised he can eat it all. Gumshoe is a lucky and odd man. Well, I guess... Let's ask why you're keeping quiet. I have to admit, I was more than a little perplexed at first. You insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say? So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No. I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you into silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, who may I ask is this person you're speaking of? While you're in a weird case, talking to a lady who is determined to get herself arrested, well, she's already arrested, <laughs> convicted and dead, uh, keep, uh, keep hydrated. This one I'm supposedly frightened of, what is this person's name? Damon Gant. Well, Miss Guy? Mr. Wright, you are addressing the chief prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more why you think you know? Damon Gant. We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he's respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry before for what he for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Did Meekins give you an ear rape yet? Uh, honestly, probably because I had my volume a little down, he wasn't that bad. He was an odd character and it did feel almost filler-ish about that whole thing, but eh, Marshall was a cool character, so meh. It did take me a bit to select the falling glove out of the videotape section, though. Why is it, though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly tampered with the evidence was me. I had access because I was second in command of the investigation. Yes, you, but also one other, Damon Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence on that case. Ta-da! I just found this in a safe in the Chief's office. This jar, and this piece of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me! Why are you taking all the blame for him? Touché, Mr. Wright. It's as you surmised, I cannot disobey the Chief's orders, even if it means being found guilty of murder. Damon Gant, what's the purse of pun in his name? Damon is probably Demon, Gant I don't know. Because sometimes I think the puns can go a bit deep, but who knows. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright, you can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. In the murder of Detective Goodman. Or perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, that's more accurate than cooperate. Orders. Although I can't tell you the details, I can say that I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Edgeworth's car. Just as I suspected, despite what everyone believes, you are not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. 
correct. Winston Pain is wince in pain. Ah. Ah, I wouldn't have picked up on that. It sounds... Some of them are very obvious, like penny nickels. Other ones are just... Fly over me. I was trying to take the body out of Edgeworth's car. So that explains it. I know... I knew it! I knew that there was something weird about all that, especially after Edgeworth said that he didn't intend to go back to the prosecutor's office that day. So, Damon Gant killed Goodman and somehow managed to get him from the evidence room to the the parking lot and put Goodman's body in the trunk. Jackhammer is obviously Jackhammer. Yep. Willpower is obviously willpower. I do find that kind of funny. The super obvious ones are all next to each other there. But yeah. Bruce Goodman's body was placed in the trunk. I'm going to guess that... Sky was... Well, Angel Star, not Sky. For some reason, my brain wants to call Angel Sky when it's Lana Sky. Brain is bleh. So, yeah. Sky was probably there picking up the body when she saw Angel and, thinking fast, decided to stab the body. But at the same time, you'd think that when this goddamn world has the ability to be like, oh, yes, this... <laughs> This body is obviously died instantly, or was able to live on for just a few moments with shenanigans. But when it comes to the dead body, where timing is very important, we have a frickin' thing that goes, Oh yes, it could have been any time between 4 and 5.30. So it's obviously 5.15, the world's whack. The trunk's lock was broken, and I discovered the murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon? You mean Edgeworth's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. The knife from the SL9 incident. Serial killer Joe Dark's knife! I couldn't just leave the knife in him, so I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. That would be Edgeworth's knife. That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. And that's the reason for the bandage on your right hand. Yes, it seems that I got blood on the victim's shoe as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged the knife in. Miss Star, huh? Ah, so it wasn't... It was to hide the evidence, not to be like, Ah, the star is seeing me. If there are actual spirits in Phoenix, right? I want a case where Maya is trying to contact Mia, but something goes wrong and she somehow switches bodies of Phoenix. That would be amusing. And then, and then Maya has to do a defense case while Phoenix is freaking out. That, that would actually be really cool. That would be neat. Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? Dark's knife. It took a lot of work to finally close the Dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want it to be open again. My intent was to prevent that by whatever means possible. So, you hid Dark's knife. The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you wrapped the knife in your scarf and hid it. In Edgeworth's exhaust pipe. Right, then I called my sister. To tell her what happened and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked Emma. I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. That would explain why Emma is so confident about Lana's innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling. Turnabout swapped would be would sound cliche. How about turnabout mind? How about turnabout turnabout? <laughs> Who knows? Names are naming things that can all is always kind of hard until it just clicks. But Turnabout Mind is also really good. A bad feeling. The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. And he then went into the evidence room. To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted the fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escape out of his own. Oh, you mean... 
Not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card, but it seems he still hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room? I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana, you've earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial. There's only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I've got to get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murderer. And what went down in the chief's office two years ago? Alright, so now we're heading into the final bit, the last bit of trial left. So we have all the evidence that we can gather. Whoosh. How are we supposed to respect Lana if you won't face for half the case? I think it's mostly because she is, like, so determined for some reason. Because, again, Gaunt has something on her. Because something happened two years ago that caused Lana to become cold and give in to Gaunt telling her to go and transfer to the prosecutor's office so that he could have a puppet there. So something I still like Lana enough because there's something about her. Something. And again, she did try to help us by giving us the case file for SL9. So. Eh. I don't know uh, all the in just yet. But I don't think Lana's a bad person. Just, uh, I mean, it's like Damon Gant is evil Mr. Red White 2000. This is the defendant, alright, but there's no defendant. Defendant lobby brain. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? Where's Emma, for that matter? It's almost as if something's been happening behind the scenes. Ah, that was the wrong voice. Edgeworth, knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the 777777777 ID number is, that is. Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Yep. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True, not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes right, and Chief Prosecutor Sky will be found guilty. She didn't do it! I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here to hear what you have to say. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Wow, 777 wasn't lucky enough. Just add four more sevens. Have seven sevens. Go to 7-Eleven. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth. Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid. Today's the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? <laughs> That's such a funny saying. I'll see you in court, but I won't be suing you. This is it. I'm ever gonna find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. Ooh, this is going to be so wonky. Because... Okay, because I just need to go over, because obviously the three-ish pieces of evidence that are important. The unstable jar, which I still don't know exactly why Gant took it, or how he took it even. I'm sure we'll run into that. I don't even know what that specifically even means. But the biggest, like, oddity where it's not like dot 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 blood, but a line of blood. <laughs> Almost in the line of a seven, if you think about it. So I don't know how that'll be, like, useful. 
I don't know how the evidence list with this is going to be useful. And I think I might want to have... Like, I don't know. Why is Emma's prints on this? And what even are you? What even is this piece of cloth? It would be one thing if I, like, knew what this cloth was and why Emma's fingerprints were on it. But it's also just a little bit weird that Gant kept it. Ah! Edgeworth, Your Honor, Phoenix has been mean to me and I want my chicky nuggies. <laughs> but... <laughs> That sounds like an amusing meme image. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Chief Gant. Hello, demon. Gonna wait a long time, then open your eyes. Morning, folks! How's everyone doing? Hey, RJ! Been back to the pool yet? No, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. Oh, that's a good one! Don't think I can top that! If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is this proposal of yours? Creep man! With the weird tinted glass man! Lana, that is to say the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. What's this all about, defendant? I just like to make one simple request and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Good Bruce Goodman in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! Objection! You can't! Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. That does feel a bit weird, but then again, this is the world of, oh, we we only have three days to actually investigate and persecute in cases. So, yeah, I, I can buy a, a, a defense attorney overruling a confession. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But Lana! Then again, if she does fire him, what do we have? Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me but it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there's no further need to continue this trial, even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening. It appears the time for verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Objection! <laughs> One moment, Your Honor. M Mr. Edgeworth! The prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage will certainly be premature. Come now, worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? Hmm. <laughs> I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. With this sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. So Gant is red, but with power. Which is kind of hilarious, considering... Actually, that is a funny parallel in that Red White did have apparently some pressure on the prosecutor's office. But this is basically Red White kind of done right in a way, I guess, if Gaunt is the bad guy, which of course he has to be because this is the final day of the trial and he had the evidence. So, yeah, because again, you'd think Red White would have been a big deal because he had all this pressure on everyone and we brought him down. But yeah, this is kind of like taking the idea of somebody who has power on s over somebody, but nobody knows he has pa that same power, really. 
Some kind of deal, hmm. Not everyone operates as you do, Worthy. Hmm. I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh, to whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call Miss Emma Skye. I request the court hears her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, I am exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to contend... I don't care what you think, Miss Skye. The exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy, you'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Miss Emma Skye, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. But technically, we shouldn't even be here anymore because she decided for self-representation. But I wonder if Pro Edgeworth is just like, fuck it, Gant has already messed with enough things, let's just have Wright do his thing. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my name is Emma, Emma Skye. My occupation? I'm Lana's little sister and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark Killings. Is this correct? Yes. I I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. Well, okay then. He sure gave in fast. <laughs> I guess as the protege of karma, he does have a little bit of power over the court. Please testify about what happened to you two years ago. <laughs> the trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. Two years ago. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. That we know. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me. But I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. The man raised up his knife and... And stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. Aha! So that's why we needed you. Because he was stabbed... Uh, in the back. So something's weird. Something's wonky. Ooh -hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh, but this is gonna get wonky fast. Well, I know how. To... We'll press on everything and then give the proper diddly dee. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. And yet I am still here, even though Lana decided to self... But I guess because of the wonkiness, maybe it could be presumed that Edgeworth said, because something weird is going on, I would like Wright to continue to represent Lana until we get down to the because some backroom deal had been made? Who knows? I was waiting in my sister's office that day. Let's press. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes, she was second in command under then-Deputy Chief of Police Gant. My sister, she was the best detective ever. Yes, I remember. The T Deputy Chief Gant and Miss Sky used to be quite the pair. I believe they shared the same office. That's right. I'd always sit my, at my sister's desk and dream about playing that organ. So he had that organ all those years ago? You want to represent yourself in court? Too bad. Right time. And again, considering this is the world of, oh, we can't do uh, we can't do actual investigation and prosecution. Three days only. I could believe this. We don't exactly have the most realistic court system in place here. I wanted to play it that day, too. 
the police department and the prosecutor's office held a ceremony that day. Lana promised to take me to dinner after she finished work. I'm going to say him again because I am paranoid. Ooh. A man came running in and took me hostage. A man? Yes, Joe Dark. He was a... a serial killer. Joe Dark was brought in for questioning on the day of that ceremony. We were desperate to get anything on him that would lead to an arrest. When he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Upon fleeing the room, Dark proceeded to take the elevator. He must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Then he ran into Sky in Gant's office. There was a lot of noise coming from outside, so I opened up the door to have a look. That's when I saw him. Neil Marshall rescued me. What was the prosecutor doing there? In fact, how did Neil Marshall get there? Because Joe Dark took the elevator, so Neil Marshall would have had to have guessed that he would have gone to the that office if he took the stairs. I wonder if Edgeworth had an American accent, but because he was with Manfred, he had a British accent. Maybe because he would have been raised with Manfred on Karma, or, or would he have? I, I I don't know if he was actually raised raised by Karma, but he was protégéed under Karma, so who knows? I just find that he's refined man, so he gets he gets accent. What was the prosecutor doing there? On that day, there were two people present during Doc's questioning. Deputy Chief Damon Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Almost forgot about Gant. Neil Marshall had just received the King of Prosecutors Award. Young and dedicated, he went straight to the questioning room after the ceremony. I assume that would also be why he was the first to run after Dark. Or I guess, maybe, because again, it's hard to know uh, the specifics because maybe the elevator let him know that it was going to that a floor with like a, a a visual panel so we took a secondary elevator maybe who knows i doubt that's really relevant when dark grabbed me I, I thought i was as good as dead and that's when prosecutor marshall came running in i i don't clearly remember what happened then but but i'll never forget what i saw in that instant can you tell us about that mr marshall jumped on dark just then the lights went out the lights? The lights? I don't know why I said it like that. <clears throat> the lights? It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. Wait a minute. If it was pitch dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then lightning flashed outside. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of that case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. Hear more. So you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago. Yes, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw. Yes, but at the time, the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? Ask about the picture. This picture the witness drew, I believe it has a very important meaning. But the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Yes, Your Honor. I drew a picture of that once, but it seems to have been lost. I could maybe give it to her. I love that anything can cause burns. Even ice causes burns. Yep. I wonder if there's a difference between, like, ice burns and, like, actual fire burns. So maybe I'll want to bring out the evidence for that, but that's for contradictions. But then again, she said it was lost. Let's hold it. Oh, wait, I, I should have the other one as well. That must have been a real shock. Even now, when I close my eyes, I can still see it as just as clearly. Tell us, what were you doing at that moment? I believe you testified that Joe Dark was holding you hostage. When lightning struck and the lights went out, Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark and was thrown aside, and the two began wrestling each other. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I was watching them. 
Emma doesn't have any reason to lie, but Lana sure does. I need to get Emma to tell me as much about it as I can. So I need to press on the... Drew a picture. You drew a picture of the scene you witnessed, right? Yes, I wanted to do everything I could to help the investigation. I can still see it now, whenever I close my eyes. That's strange. I took over the case after Prosecutor Marshall died. Yet I never received any picture. Perhaps the witness is mistaken. But, but I did draw it, I swear! I'm not just imagining it. This picture that Emma drew, that reminds me. I guess I should check the evidence again. Can you please describe it to us? The man. So maybe I can present this? Objection! Yep. I was going to do that, but I was like, does it count as a contradiction? Mr. Edgeworth, this little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. And yet you would insist on denying its existence? Huh? <laughs> it's just like, I thought we were working on this together, right? Hey, I'm not the bad guy. All I'm saying is that I, as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold! This is the evidence list for the SL9 incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over? Turn it... Ah! What's this? Yes, what is that? Hey, that's it! That's the picture I drew! Indeed, two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to this list. Huh? These lists, they're... they're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. While you are revealing evidence to the world, remain, uh, remain hydrated, do remember, yes? These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? What? Order! Order! But, Miss Skye, why did you draw your picture on the back of such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor? Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. If the evidence list was torn in half then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. Yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Edgeworth. It's possible. Let's see. Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? Oh, sorry, Your Honor. There is indeed something drawn on the back of my list. It's that, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, that thing! How? How are you here? <laughs> that thing was dancing in the evidence room! Clearly this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he was out of scrap paper. Imagine if the other half had a middle finger by Phoenix Wright that says, Love you, Edgeworth. Ah, but then he would just say, Judge, it appears that Mr. Wright has tampered with evidence. Evidence list restored and updated to the court record. Very well, witness. Will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Huh? Oh, yes, sir, Your Honor. What's wrong with Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something when she was looking at that picture. Emma's picture. All right, I'm gonna save again, because I want to take a look at that. Okay, so into the court record we go. This has been updated. Hmm. 
But what's with the two, like, diddly-dees there? Why would there be, like, uh, I don't know, like a half-pipe? That's very odd. Very weird. I still don't know what you are. This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. And that's it. To think a flash of lightning could burn such an image into your mind. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Joe Dark about to murder prosecutor Neil Marshall. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Except it was only shadows. And again, she said that he was stabbed in the chest when the autopsy report says was stabbed in the back. So I don't think it could be. Did you draw this picture right after the incident? Um, I think I drew it two or three days later. At first I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. During the time, the investigation team was reorganized. Detective Goodman was placed in charge, under the direction of Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Two or three days later, the memory should still have been fresh in her mind. Especially because she says that she, like, uh, remembers it even every time she closes her eyes. It was a very traumatic and important thing. Lightning only strikes for two seconds. How was it long enough for her to draw it if the room was dark? It's because, like she said, she didn't draw it right then and there. She's not a speed painter. It's just that the flash of light basically burned that image into her mind, and then she recreated it later. Excuse me, witness, sir. But can you please tell us why this picture is painted all black? The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. So at the time, you didn't even know it was Mr. Marshall who had come to your rescue. No, I couldn't see him clearly. The lightning was so bright, and I was knocked to the floor. You were knocked to the floor? Dark had a tight grip on me, but when Mr. Marshall jumped on him, I was knocked away. I turned around, and that's when the lightning flashed. Poor Emma. I'm just glad she wasn't hurt. What happened after the lightning flashed? After that, I must have fainted. Might as well ask. You mean you didn't see the actual murder take place? No, I I'm sorry. The flash of lightning only drove off the darkness for a split second. Not only that, but the trauma of the situation understandably caused the witness to faint. Do you really need to torture this girl any further? What? Hey, I'm not the bad guy here! Anyway, this picture... This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. <laughs> Moonlight is hiring now. Edgeworth's on the ground. In fact, I don't think we've seen anybody on the ground except for dead bodies in this game. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course! This is the exact scene! Wasn't influenced in any way from your talks with the detectives. Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? No, no, of course not! I better watch out or he might find some way to cut my salary! <laughs> I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives, so I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright, is there something that's bothering you about this picture? Huh? Oh, well... That's strange. She claims this is exactly the scene that was imprinted in her mind, and yet, there's clearly a contradiction here. Is there? I love that everyone's hair has stayed the same as they were kids. That's anime for ya! Yeah, cuz maybe it'll maybe it's maybe Phoenix is picking up what I thought. Where because earlier she said she saw him stabbed in the chest, well this is clearly him uh, someone about to be stabbed in the back. This is the picture I drew two years ago. Hmm. Maybe the autopsy report? Hmm. 
because Phoenix says that there is a contradiction here. And the only thing I can think of is the autopsy report. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture of the witness Drew contains a blatant contradiction. What? But I re still remember it just like it was yesterday. Here's my evidence. Do trust me. Yeah, that does seem to fit this world. Perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. What part of this picture contradicts the autopsy report? Um... This? Um, I think it's uh, this part. Hmm. Darn you, game. I thought you were going to be nice and just let me say it. Hmm. Maybe it's the angle descent of the knife? Oh, I forgot. Man. It's obviously this. Mr. Wright, perhaps it would be faster if you simply point it out. I shall save here. This is obviously where we need to go. Is it? Because sometimes this can be a bit finicky. Nope. The contradiction, of course, lies here. Take a look at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see its tip is broken. Even I don't have to look closely to see that, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? Its tip is broken, too. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. It was the conclusive piece of evidence that proved Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. And where, pray tell, could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim was only stabbed once, then the murder weapon should not yet be broken! Ah! What's the meaning of this? <laughs> then he gets objectioned over. Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. Then how did it get in there? Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't possibly wind up there. That's right, but what does this mean? The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is the witness's memory is mistaken. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at that time at the time. But she was sure to but she was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other way to explain this inconsistency. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already about a little something called falsified evidence? You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. Ah! Order! 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 Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Your Honor, please allow me to once again go over the events that took place on the day of the murder. Those two guys are just out there forever talking. They don't do anything else. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark along with Damon Gant. I feel like that should be worded, Neil Marshall along with Damon Gant questioned Joe Dark, because that makes it sound like Neil Marshall questioned the both of them. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there is a lie. Hmm. I... I'm not lying. The man really was holding up a broken knife. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Dark's? Could there have been one? There is another one. I'm gonna quickly say it because I know exactly which one I think it is. If the witness is, is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw, it can't just be explained away by simple observational error. 
Mr. Wright. In that instant, Emma really did see a broken knife. I assume, then, that you have some information about this other broken knife. If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The actual murder weapon was already broken to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. I'm going to assume that we're going to present either the trophy or the picture. If anything's broken here, it's you. Huh? I'm sure this must all be very amusing to you, Mr. Wright. Because I wanted to present the proper thing, and I didn't know if it wanted the picture or the... If it, if it was the picture they wanted or the actual trophy. Because it could have been either or. And they'd be like, but there is no broken knife on the trophy. That's because it was taken away by Demon Gear. The answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. This is a picture of the award ceremony. Ah! ah! What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the, the broken murder weapon. Notice the award Prosecutor Marshall is holding. That's a broken knife. As we earlier concluded, the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was in all likelihood from this award. Order, order, order! Neil Marshall was awarded King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out his, this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in this dangerous situation. But that... that can't be! Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors award knife was the murder weapon, then the murder weapon and the victim would be reversed! What do you mean? I mean... This man raising the knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall! Actually, come to think of it, didn't, uh, Patrolman Marshall say that nobody could have beaten his brother in hand-to-hand? -hand? Oh. Oh! But the prosecutor was the one who actually died! That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Hold it. Wait! I... I remember now! I remember everything! Witness? Mr. Edgeworth! What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? The one with that picture scribbled on the back. I still don't understand what this has to do with anything. I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that? That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. But then how- why did you draw that? What does that have to do with ink? All this time I've been trying so hard to forget- Are- Are you telling me? That she was so utterly terrified of the blue badger that she locked that away and instead remembered the- <laughs> the murder? <laughs> I must have locked this part away deep inside of me. Perhaps it would be best if we add this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Skye? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> First the knife mix-up and now the blue badger? This should be interesting. Emma's recollection. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed toward both of them. I think I, I knocked away the man with the knife. Then there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. How? How? The hell? He haunts us through time! This is certainly most unusual. Objection! Try impossible! The chief of detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. I knew I couldn't trust the blue badger. Exactly! Yes, well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. <laughs> Stop, please, don't pursue this any further. Lana, what's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this. I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Sky. 
We've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence! The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. It seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. Emma's recollection. I shall save. <coughs> when I saw the man raise his knife... When you say that man, I assume you're referred to Joe Dark? Yes, at least I think it was him. You think. All I could really see were shadows. The power outage that immediately preceded the incident. It also documented in the prosecutor's office reports. So, then you... I panicked and rushed toward the both of them. Judge Bailiff, please smack, smack the crap out of the defendant. Eh, you never know. This is uh, the case that's kind of emulating red-white. Why would you do something so dangerous? What else could I have done? He was about to stab Mr. Marshall. She seems convinced that Dark was the one holding the knife. But as we've just theorized, Mr. Marshall was the one holding the knife. Well, I didn't know that at the time. When that dark guy knocked me down, all I could do think was, I've got to help the other person. I think I, I knocked away the man with the knife. What do you mean you think? It, it all happened so fast and I was in shock. I don't remember everything clearly. What I did, it's all kind of a blur. And this guy was almost killed before she witnessed the murder about to take place. With so much happening in a matter of seconds, a little disorientation is only natural. I saw the man about to stab the other person, who I thought was Mr. Marshall. I knew I had to stop the man with the knife. What you did was very brave, young girl. So then, what happened next? Just then, there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. Are you sure about this? Of course, see? I even drew a picture of him here. But it was the chief of detectives who fought up this hideous beast. And that was just this year. The Blue Badger didn't exist two years ago. This is all quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised, too, when I saw him at the police department. I had this nagging feeling that I'd seen him before somewhere. Now I finally remember. Oh, brother, just when you thought that thing had caused enough commotion. Tell us, were you in the room? Where in the room did you see him dancing? He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. His shadow? So you mean you didn't actually see his face with its winning smile and all? That's right, but I still remember it. He had three creepy horns. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have uh, possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. That may well be. But what's important is that is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation. If so, then by all means, please tell us what this shadow really was. <laughs> While you are remembering the horrors of the Blue Badger, do remember to stay hydrated. What was it Emma saw when the lightning flashed? <laughs> Something with th three horns. Something with three horns. Who was this blue badger, really? I might just know. Blue badger hadn't even been dreamt up when Emma drew this picture. Yet she's certain she saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the defense's belief that on the fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looked similar to the blue badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Wright! In this room, I will save again because paranoia, paranoia, everybody's coming to get me. Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instant? Please show us what this mysterious blue badger look alike. Because again, is it you? I want to check you out again. But no, it couldn't have been you. Because while it does technically have horns... They're completely different than uh, what Emma presents, because... But then maybe they could be broken? Hmm, ah oh, darn, I think I might have fucked myself. I don't 
don't think it would have been you. My brain is still locked on it being the unstable jar. Hmm, let's take a look at the picture. Rain is saying it's the jar. But it might not be. Maybe I should go with my gut? Because maybe the thing was broken? Hmm. The mysterious blue badger was in fact this. What? But that's... Uh, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the Blue Badger. Indeed, it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? A uh, view... Oh, I've got to show them the correct angle to look at, like, this form. Dang it, game! Objection. Allow me to remind the defense case images on the witness's drawing. If Mr. Wright can't match the shape the witness drew, we cannot accept his claim. I've got to find just the right angle. Maybe I should rotate it. You can do it. <laughs> My brain <laughs> picked the wrong thing. The blue badger was the shoe. Now smell it. I think this would work. Oh, come on, that was perfect. Maybe it wants me to do it differently. So, like, more like. this. <laughs> the narrator! At least I hope I am. I think this is it! Come on, game! Turn it upside down, maybe. But I don't think that would perfectly work because we need the middle thing. The middle ha hair tassel. Because if we turn it upside down... It doesn't match perfectly. And it would be more like this. Because again, we need the middle hair tassel. It's like this. Game, give it to me! That is, maybe I'm missing something, but it has to be something like that because we need the middle hair tassel thingy. Hmm. Ah, like this. I just need to do it more like that. Hey, that was perfect. It looked, I convinced myself. Make the middle hair tassel stand all the way up. So literally upside down. Well, we might as well give it a try. The game didn't like that either. Hmm, let's read the right thing. I caught find the right angle. Maybe I should rotate it vertically a bit more or horizontally. Hmm. Cause I do think it's more like something like this. Make sure the blood is visible on the front. Maybe that could actually do it. Because that would be kind of important, yeah? Well, uh, I think I'm messing it up. So if maybe... If we did it like... Nope. Actually, yeah, you, I think you got it. Come on, game. 
This is the one thing I do dislike about this case so far, is that a lot of these kind of evidence things... Oh, dang it. I, my button of, hey, take it is also very close to the rotate button, because I am a fool. It's not my fault, I thought the game would be kind. So maybe if it was more like... Because I think this is good. Game? <laughs> I'm going to look up the walkthrough because this has to be perfect. I have to be right. How dare you, game. You eat my soul. So yeah, I, I ha we have the right idea. But it's just like, bleg, game is mean. So it is literally what we think it is thanks to chat there. It is that. It has to be showing the blood with it being like this. Let me have it right with me. Do it the way I told you to, but the blood is visible. That's what I'm doing. At least I think it is. Well, not perfectly. It has to actually match the profile, and this is what it kind of is. Game, please. There we go. It was just very finicky. I had the right idea, but it's just like, no, it has to be picture perfect. Well, is this a miracle or what? No one could possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger. Who badgered me all the way. No, it can't be! <laughs> the horror haunts us into the past! Order, order! The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So the badger thing was actually just a jar. That doesn't change anything. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see, this changes everything. Indeed, very well then. Please tell us, what's different now that we know the witness of his jaw? Yes, what do we learn? The location, right? Because the dude said that's where the safe is. So we know that the, ch the location is different. The location, technically, within there, I think. Right? Right? Because, again, this could be the game being mean. <laughs> because when I, it says location... Because location to... No, does it... No, because it wouldn't change location, but how would it change the murder? Right, haha, <laughs> left. Indeed. Because, yeah, the location, the game could be like, oh, it wasn't in the office at all, ha ha ha, is what it might be taking from this. Because to me, that might change, like, the view angle of the crime to a degree. Because how would have uh, Emma been able to see the flash of lightning with all the desks there? The murder weapon, no, the... the that doesn't change, does it? Would that change the murder weapon at all? We know the witness saw this jar, or saw its, like, shadow. But how would that, how would the jar end up in the perfect place to make that diddly D? I'm just trying to think, because when it comes to these, now it makes me worry. It makes me go crazy. Does it change the location? Does it change the murder weapon? Does it change the murderer? Because she saw the flash. Which has... Obviously, the first lightning had to be like that. Location. That was my first... Well, I saved anyway, so let's go with location, why don't we? Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. At a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yes, well, knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? 
the location of the jar is shown in a picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. The witness testified so herself. Yes, and it's these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. Oh, so this is one of those things where I could have selected any of them and they'd all be right, huh? Maybe. <laughs> or maybe I'm just lucky, thanks to chat reinforcing my initial want, but then I overthought things again. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room in Chief Gant's office. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body from Damon Gant's office to Lana Sky's? Yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason. Exactly. If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have had to have been the impact the man made when he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? The... Uh, ah! The suit of armor holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Don't tell me I got Emma, like, <laughs> arrested. Emma, you have committed a murder by accident. I know who the murderer is, but not how the case goes. I don't know. It obviously has to... Well, when it comes to Bruce Goodman, because I know that we've been focusing on the past for a long time now, but when it comes to Bruce Goodman, the only person that could have done it was Gant. So Gant has to be involved in this somehow, because again, he had the, the cloth, which I still don't know what it is, as well as the diddly D shard that uh, completed the pot, so things are weird. Yes. And since the man who was knocked away in, until the armor was carrying a broken knife... He would have had to have been Neil Marshall, wielding the King of Prosecutors' trophy. No. Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes. There is another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Of course the perpetrator would have had no idea, but nonetheless. I... I don't know if I can go through with this. Mr. Wright, what's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, and the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man in the sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Ouch. Because he was stabbed in the back. In the sky accidentally killed Neil Marshall. You mean Mr. Marshall died because of me? No! Thud. Well, great. I just... Well, that's not good. I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life. And then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. This is very odd. What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Skye, but given the circumstances... Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall! How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body... ...was to keep anyone else from finding out what Emma did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Tell me. Do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? 
Uh, evidence? Do I even want to prove it? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. Wait, so she was trying to take the blame, then immediately says it was someone else. Not in this case, because again, this isn't Bruce Goodman murdered. This is the Marshal's death two years ago. So she isn't saying, I killed Marshall. She, uh, and then trying to say, there's no definitive evidence that I moved, that things happened that way. She, uh, she's saying that they can't prove that it wasn't, that they have no de definitive proof that Emma did push Marshall and that he got stabbed and died by the thing anything. We certainly can't be can't get dead people to testify. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Hmm, <laughs> too shame, Miss Sky. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. You mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life, in the manner, in one manner or another. That's... that's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright, this is only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? Phoenix, objection! Farts, ah, yeah, that felt good. No further objections. I could see a jackass kind of... Like, if somebody wanted to do their own, like, Phoenix Wright original game that is copyright safe, I could see somebody having a, a dude like that. I've got to think back to the court record. The real murderer's name of... Hmm. Because, again... Do I even want to try? Because what is even all this for? Really. In the end... Oh. Yeah, if you turn your head, that seven-looking thing does begin to look like an M. But the thing is, do we even want to implicate Emma in this? Because all that would do would, like... Again, because earlier in this game, they said accidental murder is still murder. E even though I guess self-defense doesn't exist because you'd think... Well, I guess it's not self-defense, but you'd think that they would take it as she thought that some innocent person was being attacked by a man with a knife, so she shoved the man with the knife. It just turned out, but... I'm going to say... Because I don't even know... I did say... Because does this even matter? What is this all for? What is this all for? Because if I do prove that it was Emma, like, who did it? Mm. Do I even want to do it? This is the thing. Maybe I don't want to. Maybe this is the game playing me for a fool. Because all the other times they're like, ah, yes, I want to go forth and prove things. But that's all to try, like, and extend to get more evidence by saying it might have been Windbag in the armor of the samurai. But do I want to present this? Because what would that do aside from just implicating Emma even more? And even then, if what Edgeworth is saying is true and he wanted to leave a message, and that's what that is, a, a half-finished M... Does, would that make sense? Because he was impaled on a spear knife thingy, and the jar had gone flying through the air, hadn't it? Hmm. So how would he have gotten to it? It's like, uh, I saved, I'm gonna say, it doesn't exist. No. There's no way a dead person could tell the murderer's name. Well, 
It looks like this is as far as we can go with this. Mr. Wright, you disappoint me. I never thought you're the type to let feelings cloud your judgment. My feelings? If we overlook the victim's message, one he would have written with literally his last breath, then everything will be lost to darkness. So the game is telling me I have to do it. Perhaps the thing really is the clue I'm looking for. This is it. I can't afford any more mistakes. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Wright! Will you stop at nothing to prove my sister is a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Sky. Our purpose is not to accuse him of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright, please show us the piece of evidence that conveys a message from the deceased. This half-finished message from an unstable jar. This is the message left by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that thing cooled, I'm sure it would. <laughs> Looks like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. A message was left here, on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood here. It looks like someone wiped away the blood. Yes, but not. But notice. For some reason, the blood of some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there is a line here, drawn in blood. So what you're saying is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used his few precious moments left to him to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away. But blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points. And the victim's message will become apparent. No. Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bl bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. I've got to connect these dots to make letters. There's only one thing the victim would have written, given the circumstances. His murderer's name. Because there's no way this could be Gant, could it? Uh... No. What do you think? I came up with this message. Hmm, yes. I feel like I'm teaching handwriting to a student who is all thumbs. My bad, game. I guess I missed the proper thing. We'll go through it all again. game is mean. Because I only saw, like, the undo and the present, and I thought, oh, I hope it, but I guess I'm supposed to do normal. Dom the game. Although that little comeback was funny. Let's get to it. I'll go ahead and save here. In case I accidentally press E again, because I am Le Fool. So yeah, it doesn't it didn't say. How dare you game not give me full directions. That it doesn't want me to like connect it there and it just isn't implied. Take it, please. It's a defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Am I going to get Emma arrested? Of all people! She may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Skye. C. 
Seaworthy, can't I can't say I didn't warn you. Chief Gant, do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in the case, were you not? Ah! Yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. But Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know we aren't defenders of justice? What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery, ultimately the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. What's going on in the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death! How can he just stand there like it was his, wasn't his fault? Order! 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 But Gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where this trial is headed, no one knows. To be continued? How much longer is it? Yeesh. Mm. I'm gonna see if I can mar barge through this. Just go fast. Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. Hmm, don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal! Making a detective run all around while on duty? And to top it off, you call me here, I've seen Apple people at funerals. I take it Lana's having you run errands again. Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal. Here, she asked me to give this to you if there was a break in today's trial. Evidence Law. Evidence Law? Edward was talking about this just the other day. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule 1, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. You could at least study some evidence law, really. The chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. A message? She said, if you're planning to make take him on, you're going to need this book. Him. I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. From Miss Sky explains the two rules of evidence law. All right, so this is very important. <coughs> Doesn't look like that book will do you any good now, though. Well, let me read the book, at least. All right, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. All right, so I would say that the unstable jar is relevant because we know that it was there at the scene of the crime, and through our speculation, we could determine that it was relevant to the testimony, and then as, uh, as the two rules. No evidence shall be shown without approval. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant. So, unless I'm remembering incorrectly, that means that we can show unregistered... Well, it says no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department but then unregistered evidence. Hmm. Hmm. like, what things would be unregistered? Because technically, if you think about it, our ID card, no, because we did get this from a police person. That was technically from a police person. This was from the police department. 
So, all of this is, like, actual evidence from the police department, except for that. Because, yes, it was in his safe, but... And yes, it was obscured, but again, she said, if we're going to take him on. And besides... Yeah, there is something. Of course the freaking thing wouldn't end until we had a, an opportunity to present this. Because it has Emma's fingerprints on it, and Gant took it specifically. But according to this, it's without the approval and must be relevant. Alright, I'll try to keep that in mind then. All that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're wrong, detective. Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? Why I'm still sitting in the prosecutor's seat, despite all these allegations being thrown at me. Mr. Edgeworth! The real trial today hasn't begun yet. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility's been all but ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of. Emma Sky found out, un found out she unwittingly caused a man's death. And now you're telling me you want to do more? You gotta be kidding me, pal! You're missing the point, Detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. She merely stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're going to expose him, no matter what it takes. This case hurts too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. This is this case is crazy. Well, let's see how we can go with this. What craziness? Court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. The inquiry committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. <laughs> Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well, <clears throat> normally this is where the prosecution calls for a witness, but, uh, <clears throat> This isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have, uh, struck a bargain. You think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that. It's just, you see, everyone has been talking and... Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. What? But there's no precedent for what you're proposing. Isn't there, though? Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. Very well. The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Then it's settled. The, uh, defense may now call forth the next witness. Mr. Wright, you do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. The defense calls. Time's finally come to bring out the real murderer. Because, yeah, this is the only one that I can think of. Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stand. D Damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? As a defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gant has first-hand knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Hmm. As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? True. All right, bailiff, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. Witness, please state your name and occupation. What is this, some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation. Is he going to do the slow blink? So, you want to play hardball, eh? Please, Mr. Gant. Fine. My name is Damon Gant. I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, right ho. What's with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean that time when Lana's sister murdered that prosecutor? Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Some, either you're very brave or very foolish. 
You are aware, of course, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Sure, take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. <laughs> don't worry. I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. So, I have to play super careful, I assume. Very well, the witness may now begin his testimony. This is gonna be whack, this is gonna be whack. I'm just like trying to think this through. How's this gonna go? As I recall, Neon and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. The power outage didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with this forgery. Hmm, is that when Dark was arrested? Him, he was lying on the floor unconscious. Brutal. When Emma sent Neil flying, it seems Dark bumped his head. I see. Everything seems pretty clear-cut. The police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I better hit him hard and fast. Hmm. Alright. As I recall, Neil and I were that questioning him that day. As I recall, a ceremony was held at the police department that day. Yes, that's right. I guess you could say I'm a workaholic. After winning his award, Neil was all fired up too. That's probably what spooked Dark and made him run away like that. Was the defendant Lana Sky also present in the room? I don't quite remember. At the very least, she wasn't there when Dark ran for it. To make a long story short, we slipped up. The power outage didn't help either. So the two of you ran immediately after him, right? That's right, but Dark made it to the elevator first. So Neil and I split up. He went upstairs and I went downstairs. I guess you could say he got lucky. What's this about the power outage? Oh, that. The elevator stopped all of a sudden and I got a shock of my life. Well, probably not as shocked as Neil was when that knife went into his heart, though. That's not funny. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Could you tell us what you saw? It was a shocking sight. Neil and the serial killer were lying in a heap on the floor, all tangled together. Dark was also lying collapsed on... That's not Phoenix's voice. Dark was also lying on the floor? Yes, apparently he hit his head and was knocked out. Next to them were those two poor girls, Lana and Emma. Lana was cradling Emma in her arms. Looking back at it now, she must have already known what her sister had done. Apparently, she had already arranged the crime scene. How can you know that? Because of the victim's body. It had already been moved. So that means... You found the body near Lana's desk. That's right. I think you said earlier, it was my suit of armor that really stabbed the prosecutor. Yes. Anyway... As you can see, I had nothing to do with this forgery. So you're saying that the forgery had already taken place by the time you arrived at your office. That's exactly what I'm saying. I can understand how Lana must have felt. But moving a body and hiding evidence are inexcusable no matter what the circumstances. Is that how it really went down? Staring at the witness won't do you any good, Mr. Wright. If you're going to stare at anything, you'd better off staring at the court record. Worthy, worthy. Always the smooth talker. Which piece of evidence ties Gant to the forgery? Lana did admit to forging evidence, but that can't be the whole truth. Somehow I've got to link Gant to the incident. Or do I? Hmm. 
because again, the game gave me this. Specifically to remember, if I'm going to go up against him, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police, and unregistered evidence must be presented, it must be relevant. The only thing that I can think of is because we already put this together. So maybe I could say that the unstable jar was? I don't know. But at the same time, I'm also a little scared because what if the game doesn't actually want me to do anything? Because remember, the game has had, like, situations where I can't have, like, done anything. Hmm. I recall the alarm question, nothing there. To make a long story short, we slipped up, the priorities didn't help. When I went to the office, I found Mono there. Apparently she had already arranged, as you can see. I already saved. Maybe I should present, because... My thought is, if we're going to go completely by the super book, the evidence book specifically, then we can't give the... Uh, the cloth, because it technically isn't relevant, right? Because, yes, it does have Emma's Sky's prints on it, but that doesn't automatically make it super-duper relevant to the case, right? Because we don't even know what this piece of cloth is. Um, maybe Unstable Jar. You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery, but I'm afraid that is a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Oh, several pieces were found in your office. Take this jar, for example. That's the blue badger you showed us earlier. A piece of this jar was discovered in your safe. But the evidence list I presented earlier was actually found inside your desk. It was found where? You see, Chief Gant, these articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in the illegal investigation. Chief Gat, what's the meaning of this? Oh, here's a defense attorney who may even rival Worthy. I mean, I have beaten him every single time we've come in here. Hmm. So you admit to it then, that you were involved in the forgery. Who, me? Or do you mean you? Me? Why would I have anything to do with that? Well, you are the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so, too. Isn't that right, Raito? However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. What? Detective Gumshoe's salary drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. <laughs> uh. Yes, well, in light of the detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office and their relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my. Kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. I guess I could have presented the evidence, or the, yeah, the evidence sheet, but I forgot that we got that from there. Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment and a list? For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Doc was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. I think this... Maybe I'll want to present the jar again, because the jar piece was found there, but the rest of the jars were found in the evidence locker for SL9. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? When investigating the crime scene, you should have been more careful to observe protocol. You do understand that I'm the chief police, right? There will be consequences. Oh... Indeed, I believe I will press charges, so you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies, Chief, but would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? 
Today is, well, you know. All right, Haji. In return, though, I know, I know. That place, right? Huh? What are these guys tel telepathic? Are they gonna go swimming? For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. But we'll save and go through the diddly dee. I'd appreciate if you'd stop making these ridiculous allegations. Yes, you do have a point. You wouldn't have the guts to do something like that. What? I'll have you know, back in the day I once broke into a cattle ranch and tip. Mr. Wright, what are you saying? Anyway, you can't prove you didn't carry in the evidence, can you? If you have proof for your contrary, you're going to need it later. Later? What are you talking about? What else? I'm talking about when Raito's prints are found. Yes, if they're found inside my safe, they would prove his investigation was illegal. <laughs> Never faced anyone as slimy as this guy. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. What do you mean by that? This is all purely hypothetical, of course. But suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. If concealing evidence was found at a crime scene isn't forgery, I'm not through speaking yet, Raito. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. For all we know, it could have suddenly materialized the day after Dark was sentenced. Oh, and wouldn't that be convenient, right? The Chief is talking about a possibility. So long as you can't rule that out, your remarks, however clever they may be, will only succeed in wasting time. Tell me something I don't know. Come now, Raito. Think about it. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. Rearrange the credit. Let's keep pressing, just to make sure. How can you look me in the eye and say that? Because I'm innocent. Remember? Who was it that murdered Neil? I'm not sure I care for the word murder here. But in the end, the person responsible for Mr. Marshall's unfortunate demise was in the sky. Well, now do you see? Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Really, Chief Gant? At the very least, there is one very large benefit you've reaped from all of this. Oh, and I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would, of course, be the position you have, Chief of Police. Oh. The resolution of the S-09 incident secured your promotion to Chief. That in and of itself is sufficient motive. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes, he was going to be made chief anyway. Gah! Be careful when pointing a finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed at. So that means there's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. There. It's about out in the open now. Aji, uh, would you mind if I change my testimony a little? Uh, by all means, please do. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was e nothing in it for me. Nothing in it for you? Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl, Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're right. You don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm. Could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, would he have helped someone out? Hmm. 
Yes, because he would gang Lana as prosecutor. True, you might not help anyone for their sake, but if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Mr. Wright, it appears you're positively determined to portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. That's not what I mean. Very well then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gant might have helped forge evidence? Lana, so that he could then fo blackmail her to become Chief of, uh, Prosecutor. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky, the, the defendant I believe it's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? And as for Chief Gant, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. Self-profit? What do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved, Lana Sky was appointed Chief Prosecutor at the Prosecutor's Office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gant. But how would he profit from all of this? He would be able to use the Chief Prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority over all investigations. Do you mean to tell me that despite the Chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? <laughs> oh wait, you must mean puppet isn't so forced to do his bidding. Never mind. Admit it, Chief. You assisted Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive? To appoint her as Chief Prosecutor so you could control her. Right, oh my boy, you have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana testifying that I've done a such a thing? Lana, she's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she'd testify against Gant. Hmm, do I have any evidence that would prove it? I'm afraid without any proof, this all amounts to nothing more than mere conjecture. Unless... That is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Uh, which one would that be? Of course I'm talking about... The murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The Chief Prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial. Almost as if someone has been controlling her. Worthy, you'd better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Just what do you mean? What he means, Your Honor, is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. What? 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 Order! 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 I said order! Mr. Wright, you... you can't be serious! Huh? This... This is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency to accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder. That's I I I I impossible. Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Edgeworth said in easier to understand language. <laughs> what did you miss? Uh, well, we maneuvered through things. Um, we brought uh, Gant out because Edgeworth was like, oh, fine, if people think I'm going to just uh, manipulate all the witnesses, I'll have Wright bring out the witness. And then uh, we said we found the... I pointed to the pot shard, the unstable pot, to prove that he had evidence related to SL9. He said, oh, but do you know when they were there? Perhaps they could have been found the day after Doc was convicted. And then, through the hypothetical, right now we have said that Gant would have helped Lana forge the crime scene so that Lana would do his bidding as a puppet as High Prosecutor. It's too late, Mr. Wright. There's no turning back for us now. It looks like he's the one who's decided to go through with this. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? that the chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder? Good question. 
Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. All right, then. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got, and it better be good. Show us this evidence that ties Chief Gant to the murder of Detective Goodman. While you pull off the impossible, remember to stay hydrated. What ties him to the murder? Maybe the knife, but no, because the knife would have been... Because the knife that Lana said to us in Baba Ba said that this was the knife used to kill Detective Goodman. But Detective Goodman's ID was only used by uh, Marshall to get in there. So, if we can prove that that 777 is him, I'm going to say 777. This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There was one ID on the list we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. 77777777. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my ID card number. It's your number. <laughs> what? How do you know that? The safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. A seven-digit code. Seven digits? You don't mean... I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code was 77777777. The same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief Gant, you enter the evidence room on the day of the crime. Oh, he's actually upset! He's actually angry! Order! Order! Chief Gant, what do you have to say? Nothing. The defense's search of my office was in violation of regulations. And I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you. Wow, the day of the crime is 420. It's like they were trying to hide the fact they were smoking. Eh, who knows who smokes what. About the use of this ID card. Chief Gunt? So you admit it! You entered the evidence room on the day of the crime? What about it? I'm chief of police. Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom, what's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me, when you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Of course not. Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. You hadn't seen him in days, Chief Gant. I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met Detective Goodman. What do you mean? This trial's purpose is to determine Lana Sky's guilt. No, it isn't, Your Honor. This trial's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Gant met the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Hmm. Would it be because that was the day of the award? They were giving out the award that day. So everybody would have been there for the award stuff. Show us proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. This, right? Oh, there's got to be something more solid than this. On the day Detective Goodman had to go see Chief Gant. But the court is waiting. Darn Oops. Why don't you come meet with me tomorrow? Perhaps we could write up your letter of termination. Regardless, you did see Detective Goodman that day. Is it the knife? Hmm, what is it? What would prove that he met him that day? Shows proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. Is it the SL9 note? I would think it would be. Hmm. I love that Phoenix didn't even present the evidence yet and he got a penalty. He was just like, you're taking too long. How dare you? Hmm. Is it the evidence locker? No. We have to have something that is relevant. 
because I tried that. Would it be Goodman's last thing? Can only be submitted to Chief of Police. I'm dumb. Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filled out a lost item report. He would have had to give that report to the Chief of Police. Yet you are in possession of the report. Which means you can't be sure if he filed it. If he, he filed it, how do I know, you ask? Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to? Yes, to transfer the ev evidence out. Oh. Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him. There's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered the room. Hold on. Let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the chief of police, murdered Paul Goodman. Exactly. But wait! The chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I might have done something of the sort. Sorry, but that's not possible. According to the record, your card was only used once. Yet you showed us your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Goodman, it would have been found on his body. No! Wow, that, what was that art? Chief Gant, you didn't! The murder was most likely a spur-of-the-moment crime, for no one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After the murder, you contacted Lon at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. You're forgetting, Mr. Wright, that the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey, you, take this here dead body over to the prosecutor's office. I don't think so. Chief Gant, you left all the evidence we need to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. And all this time, I just thought it was a useless coup just taking up space. How could the chief have moved the body? He used the screwdriver to break into Edgeworth's car, put the trunk in there, and uh, then said, Hey, Edgeworth, take this back. I'm surprised Edgeworth isn't more ticked off that his car was used for a murder. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Mr. Wright, show us this evidence. To move the victim's body, Chief Gant used this. He used a screwdriver. This is how he moved Detective Goodman's body. What's that? A screwdriver? But what does this have to do with the case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime. What is this screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Uh, ah! I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. He told me he wanted to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. You mean I... I... The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car! Detective Goodman's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car! Yes. Unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to transport evidence from a closed case? There's only one plausible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice, Miss Lana Sky. Order! 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 What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal to the defense's outrageous accusations? Think back to the photograph Miss Star took at the prosecutor's office. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It's a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. 
Chief Gant, please say something! I believe. Your time's up. My time's up? Sorry, Raito, but I'm having lunch with the District Attorney General after this. We have to get going if we're going to make it in time for the early bird special! But, but the cross-examination isn't finished yet! Remember what I told you earlier? A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Like the right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right right now. What? This is not a right to casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So you're going to just run away after all this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. I stabbed old Goodman, that's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Hmm. Would it be the knife? Because the knife would have come from Detective Goodman's diddly D, and that's the only way he could have gotten in. Right? Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's see what else what happens. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gant is the current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright? Hmm. Your Honor, do you have any concrete proof? The only proof I can think of is the knife that was found there because it, w it would belong to the SL9 case. Hmm. I'll save, do it, and if that's not right, things will happen. Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Sky dispose of the body. Wait. He specifically said... Hmm. Do I have anything? Because this case is being wiki-wacky. I'm going to say yes. I can't let him just squirm his way out of this. I've got to keep the pressure on. Yes, Your Honor, I do have such evidence. Then please hurry up and present it. Because I assume... It better prove that Gant murdered the Detective Goodman beyond a shadow of a doubt. My thought is this. Uh, what exactly is this evidence? It's proof as to whether or not it's enough to demonstrate the Chief's guilt. I'll let you be the judge. But I am the judge. Oh, right. Well, what do you think, Your Honor? What I think, Mr. Wright, is I'm going to be late for lunch. Please, Your Honor, give me a little while to reconsider. Hmm, I'll say it again. Hmm. Do I even have proof? Because if it's not the knife, I don't think I have anything. That ties... Because, again, my thought process was... The knife could have only have been taken by the SSS card. And then it could have been used to kill Goodman. And with it still inside him, taken there. Like Lana said, but I guess technically... Hmm. So I'm gonna say no. I don't have any proof. Let's see what that does. It's no use showing evidence I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor. At present, I have no conclusive evidence. Hmm. <laughs> see ya, G. In that case... This court is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the chief. What? Here's a tip. Never gamble what you can't afford to lose, Raito. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. Okay, Aji, I'll leave the rest to you. Darn. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to a senior officer in our nation's law enforcement agency. <laughs> oh, Edgeworth to the rescue. Lady Luck, hmm. Maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There's one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth, another witness. In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only proof of the method of proof is testimony. But Chief Gant has invoked his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else. One more witness who can answer all the questions. 
raised in this trial. Someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? Hmm. Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling witnesses today. Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth. We can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls forth. I'm gonna thank Lana. Because if she is his accomplice, she'll be able to say everything. The defendant? Miss Lana Sky? She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15 on February 21st. Her task is to dispose of the victim's body. In accordance with a certain someone's orders... Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth, the prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well, the court will now take its final recess for the day. In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court is now in re- Hold on! Huh? Chief Gant? I thought you were going to eat! Listen good, Lana. He's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. Ah, this isn't good. Of course, you'd never support such outrageous claims anyway. Right. Just something to think about. All right, then. I've got lunch date to meet. That should be counting as, uh, manipulating a witness. Okay, if there aren't any further objections, this court now is now in recess. Ah. Uh. This is a long one. February 25th. Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. That chief, he's something else, eh, pals? Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> I'm not a detective anymore. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Eh, uh, don't worry. I've already decided where to work now. At your office! My office? Sure! I'll take the place of that top-knotted gill you used to work with. Could he mean... Did I even pay Maya? Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gant's done it again. How is it he always gets the upper hand? It's not fair he has the right to refuse to testify. Hm, <laughs> settle down, right? Remember what the judge said? But Chief, that is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. <laughs> risks? What did he mean by that? It's simple. If the Chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. You mean he forfeits his right to say anything too? Oh, Emma! I thought it was gonna be Lana. Emma! Are you okay? Yeah, when I came to I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery, so she heard everything that's been going on. Um, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. You don't know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? You murdered a guy, accidentally. But in this world, accidental murder is still murder. Now I finally know what really happened. To think that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. And she did it all just to protect me. Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? To follow Chief Gant's orders, she must have shut herself up deep inside. To force herself to do anything and everything the chief had told her to. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I... I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey! Don't go blaming yourself now! If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal! Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery, but he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I... I see. Well, we'd better get back. It's time for the final act. Well, that's a bit on the nose. Thank you, fourth wall breaking gumshoe. Emma, why don't you wait here? No, I'm going with you. I want to be there when Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right? It's time to end this. So is this gonna... Jesus Christ. Well, I'm, we're already this deep in. Might as well go whole hog. Because there has to be, like, what? Two more? Testimonies? Like, surely. Are we... What are we gonna run into? Woo! Utter whack, whackadoodle. 
Now then, will the defendant, Miss Lana Sky, please take the stand? Please rephrase. What did I say? My brain is on fire. I just... <laughs> I, my, my brain is on fire. Can't die, do not know. Miss Lana Sky, you are the chief prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of you. But Mr. Edgeworth, you already know everything. You know that all I've done these past two years. Please provide the court with your testimony, Miss Sky. And remember, you are under oath. We want to hear the truth. Of course, the truth. Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. You said, we're this deep, we might as well go whole hog. Well, I mean, it's true. Now then, your testimony, if you will. First, tell us about your relationship with Chief Gant. Everything hinges on your testimony. The only one we have to get to Gant. Gant and the fabrication. Please rephrase. All right. We're this far into the game, this case. We might as well go full on and beat it. I worked alongside Gant for years. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motivation was to get Doc convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. Hmm. Are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor, I'm confessing to a capital offense. Of course I'm sure. But Lana! If this is true, then that means Chief Gant has nothing to do with this. That's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've got to help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. What if she's telling the truth? She's not. I know my own sister. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Like a full hog. Yeah, this is no time to start second-guessing myself. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Well, I guess all we have to do is press a lot, because I don't think that I have any evidence. How many years exactly? Ever since I made Senior Detective. Let's see, I was 24 then, so that would be five years. Detective Gant and Detective Sky were legendary partners. While you are doing a judge voice, remember to stay hydrated. It is hard on the throat. I personally saw them testify in numerous cases. She must have been pretty good coming from the same school as Mia. Damon Gant was a respectable detective, and that's why. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. But well, think about it, Miss Sky. You didn't murder Detective Goodman. You told me as such yesterday in jail. You still don't get it. Mr. Wright. Any testimony you cannot present in court is as useless as idle gossip. I stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. And? I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. Did you do so to help your sister? Joe Dark was a serial killer. My sister almost became his last victim that day. I didn't want the incident to ruin her life. But what did she did was justifiable self-defense. She wouldn't have been charged with anything. That's not the point. She was traumatized that day all because of that creep. That's why I couldn't forgive him. Lana, so that's why you fabricated the evidence two years ago. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. You say you did this all by yourself. Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken prosecutor award knife was stuck in the victim's body. What? But that's wrong. But Prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. That's only a situation you dreamed was possible. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change this statement. You mean, Prosecutor Marshall wounded up being killed by Dark? Something like that. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, that was lying in the floor a little distance away. It was probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover up her lies of more lies. All just to protect me. 
So when you found the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. I broke off the tip of Dark's knife, planted it inside the wound, then moved the body. You planted the tip of Dark's knife in the victim's wound? And you moved the body? But why? Why would you do that? You of all people should know, Edgeworth. You've always had a good head on your shoulders. My head isn't that bad, but maybe I ought to ask for the sake of others. Hmm. Why did you plant the knife? That one's obvious because she'd want to implicate Dark as much as possible. Why did you move the body? When you showed up on the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you deduced it was, by Chief Gant's desk. But the body was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain it in more detail. The reason Miss Sky moved the body. The pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. Pieces of the jar, you mean? Yes, that wretchable jar you showed us earlier. In order to show that Dark committed the crime, I felt it would be more expedient to move the body. So, when you first found the body, the jaw was already... Of course, it had been shattered into pieces. If you looked at the crime scene, it would be clear right away what happened. Neil Marshall was dead and Dark was lying unconscious. In other words, the jar must have been broken during their struggle. I see. But that can't be because it couldn't... What's the matter, Emma? Apparently the jar shattered at the time the crime was committed, but I have a feeling there's more to it than that. There must be a contradiction here somewhere. I think, because I don't think there's a reason to... Because, well, let's press on this just to make sure. Press through everything. So you rearranged the crime scene. Are you sure you didn't do this to keep Emma from looking like a murderer? How many times do I have to tell you, Mr. Wright? Emma didn't do it. Period. Are you sure desperate to hide that fact? You're willing to risk the death sentence? She's lying! She did it so I wouldn't be blamed for what happened! In any case, as a prosecutor, what I've done is unpardonable. Well, even after all this, she's still trying to say what that she did it. Probably because she's that afraid of... the Gant. She... Not only does she want to protect Emma, but she's probably super scared of what Gant could do. Mr. Wright, my sister's lying! Looks like she's determined to protect you to the end. She insists she's fabricated the evidence by herself. There's no way she could have done it alone. I've gotta get Lana to talk more. If she's lying, then there's bound to be a slip-up, and I know exactly what it is. Because... It has to be the jar. Because how else could the victim have written on the jar if it was shattered? Miss Guy, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered? If that truth were to be exposed now, the last two years of your life will have been in vain. Even so, I am compelled to bring everyone's attention a significant contradiction within your testimony. A contradiction in my testimony? You testified, and I quote, the pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? It's a simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on this jar with the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecutor must have written in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. In order for the victim to be able to write his message on the jar, it must not have been broken before he died. Ah. He couldn't have written Emma's name on a shattered jar! Mortar! Order! Your Honor, it would appear more information is needed in regard to this jar and its bloody message. We may be missing something critical here. Something critical? Chief Prosecutor, it seems you're as in the dark as we are about the truth towards which we're headed. What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well. The witness may now continue her testimony. Jar and message in the blood. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar, but it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got all of them. All I could do was 
of all, all I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. You mean you are the one who wiped away the message in blood? I wasn't chief prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Dark was the real murderer. That's why she tried to erase the real evidence. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. I merely noticed the blood traces on the jar. So the jar was already broken. It's a miracle the thing hadn't broken earlier. It certainly looks as feeble as the defense's case, but not as feeble as the judge's judgment. You are an ace detective. You never missed a detail. Do you really expect us to believe you didn't investigate what was written on the jar pieces? Normally I would have. But it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. So, you didn't know it was your sister's name was written on the jar? No. If I had known, I would have gathered all the pieces and ground them to dust. Well, that helps my case. Lana, you do that for me? It seems you two might make up yet. <laughs> anyway, I just barely had enough time to move the body as it was. If someone happened upon the scene, you'd lose your chance to erase the evidence. You must have been in a hurry. I was. I knew I had to destroy the evidence before anyone came. This is rather shocking. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. I'm afraid this action of yours reveals what really happened. What do you mean? If you really thought Dark killed Prosecutor Marshall, you wouldn't have wiped away the blood. What else could I have done in that situation? Lana, I only had a few moments. There wasn't enough time for me to do anything else but gather up the pieces. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. But how could you see with the power out? It should have been pitch black in that office. A detective is always prepared, Mr. Wright. Even now, I can always carry a pocket light with a camera with me. Even I carry a bottle of emergency luminol wherever I go. I never miss anything. I got every last piece. I know that Phoenix can stand for long periods of time, but there has to be chairs for the defense and prosecutor, right? I mean, we live in a world where people say, Oh no, you can't let cashier people sit. That's gonna make them be mean to the people. Like, literally, the only uh, grocery store in America that lets their people sit is a German one. Meh. The world's wacky. All I could... Let's see. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. So you illegally rearranged the crime scene. Yes, I don't have any excuse for my actions. I'm sorry, Lana. I didn't know. I treated you so badly all this time. It's not too late. There's still plenty of time to make up. After we've gotten to the bottom of this incident. No doubt this day will leave a permanent stain on the history of the prosecutor's office. More contradictions have surfaced in her testimony. Your sister's really putting up a fight. She must really care about you. Still, she's not doing this right the right way. I think I finally figured out the contradiction in her testimony. I'm trying to think. There's one final possibility that might turn everything around. I'm going to assume that we need to present the jar to say, but the big piece was in the safe. What about those people that literally can't stand for five minutes without sitting down because their bones are fragile? Well, we live in a wacky world. Again, I'm going to presume it is this. Objection! Miss Guy, I believe this jar conceals the truth even you were unaware of. What? We found the final piece of this jar in Chief Gant's safe. In the Chief's safe? But how? I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about the final piece. There was... still blood on it. But the witness just testified that she gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off them. Yes, which leaves us with only one explanation. On the night Prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first one to show up on the scene. Chief Gant got there before you! But couldn't the defendant have simply missed a piece? I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. That may well be, but everyone makes mistakes. Even I once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They were in my mouth all along. Ha! Can you believe that? Have you forgotten, Your Honor? When this witness arrived at the scene, the jaw was already broken. Oh, that! There's no way a name could have been written on a shattered jar. Another person discovered the scene prior to the witness. 
I hope you're not implying this person was Chief Gant at the time he was looking for Dark Downstairs. The question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide the fact for two years? Well, Your Honor, can you answer us that? N no! Wait, I'm not the one on trial here. Damon Gant arrived at the crime scene prior to the witness. He proceeded to break the jar and purposefully hid one of the broken pieces. Question, what is this action called? Fabrication of evidence. But, but why would Chief Gant do that? Well, the judge had a breakdown. I'm honestly surprised they didn't make a unique animation for it. I mean, they gave, like, Edgeworth his kind of side smile, so it'd be kind of amusing to see a custom judge breakdown. In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? What happened afterwards? Discovering the scene, Lana Sky believed her sister Emma killed the victim. Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark, sparing Emma. And therein lies the reason. The reason why Miss Sky became the chief's puppet. Oh, did, did she bit her thumb hard? No, I did it on my own. Please, sis, stop trying to protect the chief. I... I can't watch you suffer anymore for my sake. No, you didn't. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. Don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. Defense attorneys make up all the most foul lies to defend their clients. Foul lies? Imagine that coming from my own client. Hmm, I guess you do seem the type who likes to twist the truth. Wait a minute. <clears throat> what if... We're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Lana, maybe right after all. What do you mean, right? So, so you do tell foul lies then, Mr. Wright? Miss Skye, please testify once more. But if evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's accidental killing of Prosecutor Marshall might also be a lie. But, but I do remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. Miss Sky, if you will. I... I can't. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. This cross-examination may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will, if you tell the truth. <laughs> Phoenix, wait a minute. What if I killed him? That would be kind of amusing. Accidentally, Phoenix was the murderer. I'll testify about what I really saw. All right, the witness may testify once more for the final time. Actual crime scene. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor's sword. Emma and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. When I saw what had happened, I thought she did it. That's why I erased all the evidence that linked her to the murder. I had Chief Gant help me remove the body from the sword and carry it. But if it all really was a fabrication, Emma might be innocent. Unbelievable! The body was impaled on the armor's sword! You are the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. What? To me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene. I, enc I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. But I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Lana must have known. See, Mr. Wright, she really does have faith in you. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please present this picture. I don't even remember it. What did she give me? I don't remember receiving any pictures from Lana. Lana said she gave it to you this morning, right? I seem to remember getting something from her then. Let's check that evidence again. There must be a picture in there somewhere. The only thing that I got from her this morning was this evidence law book. But I didn't fucking check it because I'm a moron. Hey. Oh, wait, I couldn't have checked it because it wouldn't let me open it. The game played me for a fool. Hey, there's a picture here. Brutal. Oh, oh my. This is the actual crime scene. 
No one other than... Uh, no other detective saw the crime scene like this. Because I contacted Criminal Affairs only after I had rearranged everything. Lana's picture inserted to the court record. <gasps> Mr. Wright! That piece cut out from his vest, could that be? The cloth we found inside Chief Gant's safe. What's this? This is a handprint, isn't it? That cloth, it had fingerprints on it. Whoever fingerprints those are must be the real murderer. What? But those fingerprints, they're yours, Emma. Why are your lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? Anyway, let's get on with the cross-examination. So long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out the real murderer. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Whew. As you are slowly picking away at a super crime, remember to stay hydrated. When I... But what? I didn't even get this fit. Come now, RG. This is the poorest excuse for a trial I've ever seen. Chief Gunt. What now? You may want to make me out as the bad guy, too? If so, I'd like to put in a word or two in my defense. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? You already declined to testify. That means you forfeited your right to make statements of any sort. This must be that risk we were talking about earlier. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of the noose tightening around your own neck. <laughs> Ah, so what? You think I'm worried? Sorry to disappoint you, but I don't need to make any statements. What do you mean? The evidence will do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present evidence. Yes, that's true. Wait, you mean you still have some conclusive evidence? Well, that's a first. The game was about to allow you to cross-examine them, immediately get interrupted by someone else. Yeah. No, I don't, but someone does. Someone? So, what's your excuse, Righto? Why have you been keeping quiet about it? You do have something to show us, right? Something that proves you knocked over Mr. Neil Marshall, causing his death. Conclusive evidence that leaves no room for doubt. Is this true, Mr. Wright? If I show that piece of evidence now, Emma sure to be made out as a murderer. Hmm. Do we want to do that, though? Do we? Hmm. Yeah, because it's true. Emma would be made out to be the murderer. Even though I would point out that the piece of cloth was cut away, but... I'm gonna say no, because he doesn't have it. Mr. Wright, if you have any more evidence, present it now. And if you try to conceal anything, you will be one appearing before the Board of Inquiries. What do I do now? I better think this through carefully. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. Can I present that piece of evidence? The one that shows who really killed him? Nah, because fuck Gant. He can make a fool of himself. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. What? You lie! Wait, and besides, as the book says, can we read the book? No evidence shall be shown without approval of the police department, and unregistered evidence present must be relevant to the case on trial. Technically, right now, we don't know if it's relevant and it hasn't been approved. Hmm. Chief Gant, you, you opened my safe. I know you took what was inside, the conclusive evidence. I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Wright, why don't you show them? We found it together. Oh, I see. It's because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at this picture. See the victim's vest? Notice anything odd about the chest area? It looks like part of it has been cut for some reason. You mean you have this in your safe? What? That means the chief of police have been concealing evidence. This is going to be the, the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the gall, Righto. Well, I can't just let you pin me up as the murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. What? You mean, you admit it?
I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use this situation to control Lana. So you really were manipulating her. I knew Lana, if I had made it look like the blame with her sister, that when she saw the scene, she would ask for my aid. So you assisted Miss Skye. I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant the knife tip in the victim's body and move the body across the room. And I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Doc convicted. When I tampered with the crime scene, I hid two pieces of evidence. This was before Lana arrived at the scene, mind you. Two pieces of evidence? You mean those items in your safe, but why? For insurance, of course. Hmm. Let me go look over things over, because we do have this. That has... Blood all over everything. I'm trying to think. There's no blood on this. Besides, if it was two years ago, Emma won't be convicted anyway because she was a minor. She technically still is. But at the same time, uh, we don't know what would have happened, but they were totally going to go and convict Edgeworth and he was a child when he thought he killed his father. Mm. But yeah, there should be blood on this. So I think that's going to prove that all the blood that we see in this photo is obviously from the impaling, so maybe Gant did kill Marshall. Insurance? I was sure my plan would work, but it's always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't about to let anyone blame me for a murder that girl committed. You mean you were calculating that far ahead while forging the evidence? What do you take me for, a fool? I didn't make policy police chief by dumb luck. No, look at her bio. Eight, she's 18, so uh, two years ago she'd be 16. She should be 17. Oh no, she's 16. She would have been 14. You are the fool. I am the correct man. I thought she, I thought she was 17, but she's actually 16, so yeah. But I was technically correct. See this jar fragment? I hid the most legible part of Emma's name. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off all those other pieces. But if you fabricated all the evidence, what's to say you didn't fabricate the message on this jar too? Ho, ho, ho. Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean that piece of cloth? Come on, Righto, cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit it then, Chief Gant, that you were hiding the cloth you cut off the victim's vest in your safe. Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have to do that, being chief at all. But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence you could present. Foolish mood, Righto. You should have shown it when before it was too late. It's been a long battle. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. Hmm. Maybe, because uh, I do have to show the piece now, obviously. Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. All right then, show, let's see this conclusive evidence. The evidence that shows that who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. Hmm. I guess the only thing that we can, because this technically does prove that he killed her, or killed him. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh, oh, yes! At last you finally brought it into the open. There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that it be immediately sent to the lab for analysis. This handprint on the leather. There must have been a strong impact for it to be left so clearly. You mean, it could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. Ho oh, ho ho, you're as slow on the uptake as ever, Worthy. What? Think about it. Raito had all this time to present this evidence, yet he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? You mean you already know? You know whose fingerprints are on that. Mr. Wright, do you really know? Whoever the fingerprints belong to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well. I'll tell you. 
And I can't lie about this. Should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. The person to whom the fingerprints belong to is... Emma Sky. Emma? Emma Sky? What? They're mine? I'm sorry, Emma. But why? Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> You're really something, Raito. You know this girl did it all along, and yet you still tried to pin the murder on me. So it's true. Tragic, but true. This girl really did shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. How could you? You, you monster! Miss Sky, you knew whose fingerprints those were all along, yet you... You acted like she really didn't. Miss Sky, it's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Ha! Ah, but I'm afraid it's over. And boy, not only this trial, but your career too. You purposely concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to pressing charges for the def after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your badge, boy! What's the matter, cat got your tongue? Aren't you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer? Before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, and what's that? Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? What? Chief Gant, you are absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Sky, wasn't it? I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What? A contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction. One that proves who the real killer is. Mr. Wright, this piece of cloth, what could it possibly contradict? Chief Gant, your tyrannical end, well, tyrannical reign ends here. Because again, if we take a look at the photo that we got, because there has to be a reason that the photo exists, there's no blood on the cutaway piece. Behold, the piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the picture Miss Sky took. Take a good look at it. See where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes, his undershirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest, though. Exactly my point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's only natural. His lungs, no doubt, were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. Oh, but that piece of cloth. Wait, there's no blood on it. Ah! Since Emma Sky's fingerprints are on this cloth, there's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at that time. No, this, this is nonsense. Now then, Chief Gant, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Miss Lana Sky picked up the unconscious prosecutor and impaled him on that armor's sword? <clears throat> then to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person proceeded to write her name on the jaw with the victim's blood. A jar that they then broke on purpose to leave behind a clue. And make Lana believe her sister did it. Remember what you admitted only moments ago? That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of victim's vest? Ironic, isn't it? Through the very act of creating insurance, you've proved that you are the actual murderer! No! finally all over. Is it? Is it really? Is it over? OBJECTION! Ooh! <laughs> that was close, Raito! You almost had me! Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that! I refute your allegations! What do you mean you refute his allegations? You say that piece of cloth is illegal evidence! Order! Order! What nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect! Remember, Aji? 
Earlier, all right over here concealed that piece of cloth. So then, what's your excuse, Raito? You have to... You do have some conclusive evidence, don't you? Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. Well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present evidence. At that moment, that piece of cloth ceased to be legal evidence. That's not fair. <laughs> did you actually think you could best me in court? It looks like the last laugh's on you, son. I'm afraid Mr. Gant's claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? True. Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Hmm? Well, Mr. Wright? It seems, at last, the time for me to reveal my plan has come. Mr. Wright, do you admit to it that you purposefully and illegally concealed this piece of cloth? I did not. I admit, I refuse to present it at one point. Aha! So the evidence is illegal! No, it isn't, Mr. Gant. Huh? It's not that I didn't present evidence then, it's that I couldn't. What do you mean, you couldn't? There are certain procedures involved when presenting evidence. No, Archie, don't listen to his lies! He's nothing but a coward, you can't really believe... There's only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well. Let us settle this once and for all. Earlier, you refused to present evidence. If you can prove your conduct was not in violation of law, then do so now. Book. This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. What's this? I've done my homework too, Chief. Indeed, Emma Sky's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. What? You see, it's written right here in this book. The second rule of evidence law. Rule number one. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. I found this piece of evidence myself, inside your safe. It goes without saying I did not have approval from the police department. Rule number two, unregistered evidence present must be relevant to the case on trial. And here is the crux of the matter. You see, at the time, it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want relevancy? Just take one look at this picture and... Sorry, but you can... can you recall? When was that picture presented? That was shown only a few moments ago. No. He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you, Damon Gant. You yourself confessed to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of cloth of the victim's vest. <laughs> oh yes! It was then that you approved this cloth, as conclusive evidence. Yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. The only person who could have cut this cloth from the victim's vest is the one who stood before Prosecutor Marshall in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer. And there's only one person who that could be. Damon Gant, the killer was you. N <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> oh, I am lightheaded from that, and now I have a headache. Oh, I knew I should have gotten rid of him. That good for nothing scum. For two years, he's been snooping around the department. Trying to get something on me. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate the case. He recruited Angel Star, then convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman? Yeah, that's right. 
If the evidence is transferred, I'll lose my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you've got to help me. Goodman turned him down, as he ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. He went w I went with him to the evidence room. Then all of a sudden he decided to speak out! <laughs> what are you talking about, Goodman? Can you please reopen the investigation, Chief? We can't transfer the evidence out. There are too many questions left unanswered. He opened his evidence locker, and as he was taking the evidence out, he said, It's not too late. I'm gonna hand all of this over to Marshall. Well, to be honest, I was a bit taken back by his words. I had a bad feeling when he came to see me, but I never thought he'd bring up SL9. That's when I saw it, the accursed night. I couldn't just pull it out. Doing so would have only led to more blood, making it near impossible to hide your crime. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I hurried to wipe it up. I was worried so much about the floor, I didn't realize my fatal mistake. The bloody handprint. Detective Gumshoe's locker. I used to be known as the crime computer. But everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. Then you put the body in my car. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of any other way to move the body. I broke your trunk, but what's the big deal? You make a lot more than us detectives ever will. <laughs> Leaving the prosecution's car aside, how? How could you get Miss Sky involved in all of this? Oh, as you're lightheaded from doing a maniacal laugh, remember to stay hydrated. Well, she had as much to lose as I did if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker. I felt bad for having to do it. I also didn't have time to pick and choose what to take. So, you left the jar fragments in the glove. Yeah. It looks like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. Did he clap a lot? Oh, yeah! Man did like the limbo as he laughed, maniacally clapping his hands. They all did their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They do their jobs well, much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, Worthy, why do you stand in court? Me? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. One day you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. Bubba. Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, Aji. What? Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. Sorry, old friend. I'm sorry too, Damon Gant. I knew you as you used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator, an example to others on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you are no longer that person. Those days are gone now, RG. Thanks for all the memories, though. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll be fine. I hate the, even though you hate my guts, we're both the same quote. Yeah, th it really depends on who is saying it and who they are saying it to, but I don't see that the correlation between Gant and Edgeworth. Maybe earlier, when Edgeworth was much more ruthless, but now, no. Now you have Raito here, and Worthy. With these two around, you can't go wrong. In fact, I can hear them already. The melodious sounds of a new beginning. There are two things I want you to understand. Yes? 
First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Damon Gant betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Miss Skye, you no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years, from the time I had Gant help me forge evidence up until today. So, it seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Skye. I couldn't get you out of all your trouble. My, my, what high standards you have for a rookie. I can see why Mia thought so highly of you. Who knows, a few years from now, you just might make it to the top. Lana, even though you proved our medicine, I still killed him. That would be hilarious. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. Miss Sky, And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it's been for you. <laughs> it was nothing. Liar. I was worried the pressure might break you. And yet, you rose above it all and guided Mr. Wright to victory. You've done well, Mr. Edgeworth. Stop it! I only did my job. In light of this case, it seems a good self-examining is in order for all of us. Miss Sky. Yes, Your Honor? You are innocent of murder. However, although the Chief blackmailed you, the fact is you still acted as his accomplice. A trial will be scheduled for these crimes at a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all this? Why are you smiling? It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt free of these heavy chains. Well, this trial has gone on far too long already. Regarding the charge of murder, this court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Skye, not guilty. This, like, single day of court lasted longer than, like, multiple cases. That is all. This court is adjourned. Whoo! At long last, it's finally over. Uh, Emma? Why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off the hook, but at least she wasn't convicted for a murder she didn't commit. No, that's not it. Just now, after the trial ended, I can see why Mia Fey thought so highly of you. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. You've done well. You know, I did my best to, but Lana didn't say a single word to me. Hope I'm not in <laughs> interrupting anything, pals. <laughs> Judge, I find the defendant Miss Lana Sky guilty. Wait, what? But hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my dude, gumshoe interrupting things again. Oh, I uh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Gumshoe, come back already. This is the third time. You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making a detective run all around while I'm duty. And to top it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. <laughs> hey, lighten up, pals. I'm only kidding. Oh, are you here because of my sister again? Nope, not this time. I came today because of you, pal. Me? That's right. I thought you'd like to see someone. So technically, it was because of her sister. Lana! Should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Well, I won't tell if you won't. Besides, I'm not a detective anymore, so they can get fucked. Emma, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day, two years ago, was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. Sis, I asked Gant to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake. But now, I realize I was wrong. I changed after that day. 
I had to. It was the only way I could make it through the past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by distancing myself, but I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I... I was scared. Scared that you'd look at me with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you'd react if you knew. But sis, you were only doing it for me. No. Huh? I turned my back on you that day. In hiding what I believed to be the truth, I was deceiving you. Sis, I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis, you don't have to apologize. I'm happy now. You're happy? You're going to jail. <laughs> of course. You know, sis, I always knew uh, that one day you'd come back, and now you have. Oh, Emma. Emma. No one can change the past. The only thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. How must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because in doing so, we can find the way back to our rightful path. And it is from there that we can move forward on to a brighter future. At least that's what I felt watching the two sisters make up. Mr. Wright, Mr. Gumshoe. Me? Thank you both for all that you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? Edgeworth? Stop hiding and come over here. <laughs> Where was he hiding? Behind that little ashtray thing, obviously. I just came to say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Right, well, I'll be going now. Aw, oh, no, whoop. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. We were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. It's too late for me. No matter what anyone may say, I realize today that I can't correct my mistakes. Mr. Edgeworth, not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gant was right. You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. One day you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. But you're not alone. You have me. I do despise criminals. I plan to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. It's scary, but I've known that to be true for quite some time now. But Edgeworth, who knows? Given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gant did. That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on as a prosecutor. Become a defense lawyer! <laughs> Become the protagonist of your own games! Edgeworth, don't you understand? Damon Gant and your mentor, Manfred von Karma, were both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime, but they both made the same mistake. You said in order to fight crime on my own, I'd need a weapon. That may be true, but think back to today's trial. You weren't alone. You were working together with Mr. Wright. And because of that partnership, you were able to present evidence that otherwise would have gone undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Oh, uh, yeah. What is this, a pop quiz? What evidence did he help bring to light? Uh... What evidence did he help bring to light? There was the evidence list. Come on, Mr. Wright, show him what Lana's talking about. Evidence, huh? Something that neither Edgeworth nor I would have been able to find out on our own. Yeah, it has to be the... Evidence list. That's the picture I drew. Our counterattack began with this. You had one half of the evidence list, and I had the other. Apart, we couldn't have been able to completely restore Emma's picture. That didn't just happen by chance, Mr. Edgeworth. It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth, if you'll excuse me, 
There are still some loose ends that need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Edgeworth, what will you do now? Well, whatever you do, just remember, you can let what happened to kill the prosecutor in you, or you can let it help you grow. In the end, it's up to you. I know. It seems I owe you my thanks too, right? But what I face now is my problem. Edgeworth, I'll be waiting for you in court. Farewell. I'd better be going too. Okay, I'll be by to visit soon. It seems we both have a lot to learn and catching up to do. Here, this is a little something for you. Scientific investigation? It's the first book I ever bought. Studying it, study it well. Thanks, sis. I will. And so another case came to a close. And for the sisters. I have faith. Faith that their lives have only just begun. And as for me, I think it's time I started on a new journey of my own. A journey to rediscover myself. Go stand under a waterfall. Well, don't go trekking off just yet, pal. Huh? What is it, detective? There's just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. You see, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. But... I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, it may be okay with me, but the folks at the prison are a different story. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard to order a sneaker out for 30 minutes. Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Huh? Way to go, detective. I didn't know you had a wild side. Yeah, well, <laughs> you see, Mr. Wright is the one who'll be footing the bill. Huh? Huh? What, you think I could afford it with my salary? You gotta be kidding me, pal. Huh? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wright. You're the best. Why is it I suddenly feel like I want to scream? Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we all go pay, pay it off together? Yeah, that's a great idea. Come on, guys. Let's go! <laughs> uh. And that is the final case of Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright, the first game in the trilogy. Oh, I arranged for a friend of mine in Europe to take care of Emma. I hope she'll be pleased to study under a top coroner. As for me, this affair has pretty much ended my days as the prosecutor's office. Still, I'll manage to find my way back to the field somehow. Then, I'll be able to investigate crimes together with Emma. So yeah. I think the mechanics, like, I think the only thing that was definitively bad about the case was the initial testimony by Angel, by Angel Star. The case, I actually really liked, and I'll talk about that. Yikes, I thought I was a goner for a moment there. In the end, though, they overlooked my unauthorized investigation of the chief's office. If we penalized you anymore, it'd be worse than firing you. <laughs> yep, that's what they said. It just goes to show, you can't shake me off that easily. But yeah, I liked the case. It's just there are specific things about the functions of the case that were, like, unintuitive and weird at, from time to time that I think with a second pass would have done wonders, and this would have been a great case. And we'll talk about that more after Meekins. My new mission is to guard the main entrance and take care of Billy! Can you believe it? I've been demoted to a security guard! My partner's keeping an eye on the entrance for me today. I'll show them, though! Someday I'm going to make a detective! Yes, sir! Then I can be just like that dick gumshoe! Oh god, there are two of them. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the twists and turns of the, of the mystery were great. The characters were great. It's the functions of the gameplay that were bad. <laughs> and we'll, oh no. Oh no. Not him. Not him. The demon from time itself. <laughs> uh, I just love that they actually utilize the blue badger for this. It's highly amusing to me. But again. Oh, no, he's dead. Yes, he's dead. Victory for all. But yeah, again. The characters, the story, the 
it, it feels good. It's like, it's a good story here. But like, again, the first testimony, how you went about it, and the way things were introduced. What is it? Can't you see I'm having me a showdown with a steak lunch partner? Miss Star managed to sneak this in to me. She's seen one of the guards here. Well, cowboy, it looks like you did it. You even gave Bambina back her smile. Can you make sure Billy and the gang get their water? But yeah, like, how everything tied together, the fact that it's kind of a mix of, like, re uh, Red White and the DL6 incident. Looks like we won't be seeing each other for a while. As a farewell gift, I put a new meal on the menu, the right way lunch. The top layer tastes as bitter as defeat, but the bottom layer is as sweet as victory. Kids seem to dig the turnabout theme. It's a hot seller around exam time. Just make sure you're <laughs> you not to eat it backwards. And then the other weird things I remember are like the bibbidi bop, the glove falling out of Goodman's case. That was a little odd because it didn't just like show up immediately. I'll never forget what that young defense lawyer said after the trial. Let's see, what was his name again? Mr. Left. Anyway, he said he's been doing a something or other for how many years? Well, anyway, I've got another trial to get to, so I'd better be. Huh? Oh no, I forgot my gavel. Sorry, gotta go. Oh, they actually made him leave. That's amusing. I do think that introducing new mechanics is interesting and was probably a good idea in the case of it being a port to the DS to justify, hey, you played the game once before, here's replay value beyond all that. But the fact is, it wasn't good because of, oh, hey, Maya! Ah, nothing soothes the soul like fresh country air. Still, sometimes I do miss hearing you and your objection. Still, I can't go back until I'm a full-fledged spirit medium. Mystic Maya, afternoon training's about to begin. Coming. Well, see you around, Nick. But again, this is like introducing the, like, I think the investigation of evidence mechanic was okay. That was a good addition. The blood, like, discovery was eh a little bit, because it just felt a bit spammy. But the fingerprint mechanic was a, a little wonky at the end because it was only used like two times in two instances. And the first insta instance was okay. Mr. Edgeworth. Ah, oh, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, I brought you your tea. What's going on? Well, that's ominous and probably sets up the next game, maybe. But yeah. The second instance of having to do fingerprinting on the cloth was poorly done, probably again because it's a new mechanic that they introduced, but maybe never. <laughs> of course you're going on a train. Thanks for coming to see me off. I can't believe I'm going to Europe. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you so much for everything. I'm a little sad, but I'll be all right. Whenever I want to see Lana, all I have to do is open this book. <laughs> oh, this is adorable. <laughs> That's adorable. That's good. That is good. That is very nice. I like that. I like that a lot. Achievement unlocked, rise from the ashes. And is that everything game? Yep, saving content. And that is the end of the first Ace Attorney game. Overall, the main game is really good. The original four trials are nigh perfect. Even if some people apparently don't really like the uh, Turnabout Samurai, I still like that case. I do feel that it introduce it gives you a break from the main overarching of the other three cases that have Larry, Mia, Maya, and Edgeworth. But at the same time, uh, it also allows you to get to 
get to feel the full breadth of what a full investigative court journey is before the final case. So I do feel like it's a necessary breather step that still increases something while giving you a break from something else. I like that. The fifth case is definitely flawed, is definitely... It's the most flawed case. But... Honestly, it almost is there... It's definitely better than the first case because it's the goddamn tutorial case. I will say that I enjoyed Turn, uh, not Turnabout, Rise from the Ashes more than I did Turnabout Sisters. Yes, it was more frustrating, more meandering, and had more issues, but it, the good parts overall were, like, more entertaining for me. Turnabout Sisters is still the better case, but I enjoyed Rise from the Ashes just a bit more because it had a better villain, it was more realized, it was long as fuck. <laughs> That's probably the worst part about Tur Rise from the Ashes. It is way too long. <laughs> Again, the characters, story, mystery, all really good. All really good for Rise of the Ashes. It's the extra mechanics that they kind of shoved in as like, hey, the DS port is justified, guys, that makes it kind of falter a bit. And at some times it does also feel a bit weird, like again, the first testimony was odd with Angel Star. But everything else, aside from the fingerprinting, and that's mostly just a function thing of getting to the fingerprinting, I knew what I wanted to do and I knew what I needed it to do too, but the game wouldn't let me do it unless I did it in a weird way. But yeah, I think that's mostly the only thing is the talking to people and knowing, like, when I have everything was a bit weird in the investigative portions. Whereas everything else was a lot more straightforward and forgiving in the investigations in the other four cases, and I wasn't sitting there going, what do I give to this person? Whereas in the Rise from the Asses and... Rise from the Ashes? Rise from the Ashes investigation, the... Like, talking to people and presenting evidence parts were very wonky at times. So, yeah, I feel like Rise from the Ashes is the least polished, the most flawed case in the first game, but I still liked it. I still liked the characters, I still liked the mystery, I still liked the majority of the court sections. Even if the, uh, like, ooh, make the pot look like the blue badger head, that was a little finicky, but understandable in the end. And they at least didn't give you penalties if you messed that up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, overall, the first Ace Attorney game, technically the DS port remake of the trilogy, is really good. Even if people dislike Turnabout Samurai and Rise from the Ashes, I personally like them. They have issues. <laughs> Rise from the Ashes has issues. But it's still nice. In the end, Ace Attorney, Phoenix Wright, the first game, is really, really good. I would probably say that the original Game Boy Advance version is probably a masterpiece, and it's only the issues with the additional bonus case that brings it down from super masterpiece levels. Again. Uh, the issues are there, and I understand why other people say, yeah, this case is bad. But honestly, I'm disappointed to hear that it wasn't adapted into the anime. Probably because I think I've heard timeline reasons are also a bit off with that bonus case. But the characters and story were the best part of Rise from the Ashes. So I'm kind of disappointed it didn't make the anime cut. Oh well. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. And thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope to see you next time. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels, an edited content YouTube channel, Neon Icy Wings, and then my stream and stream archive YouTube channel, Neon Icy Games. So if you want to watch my past streams or current streams in the future, you can subscribe to Neon Icy Games. If you prefer to watch on Twitch rather than YouTube, I also dual stream to Twitch at twitch.tv slash neonicywings. 
If you want to see my art, like my little avatar in the corner, you can see me post art occasionally to the various sites of the world, like Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Newgrounds, the new site Inkblot. You can find all of my socials and my link in my link tree, which is like linktr.ee slash neonicywings, or wherever major links are placed within bios and link places on social medias. But yes, but yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye, bye.